All right, I think we're live. So what I will be doing is uh, showing you guys some of this old photo that I'm working on. And I hope that it's kind of uh, fun to watch. These random live streams are kind of fun. I'm going to catch everybody by surprise, as I always do. But I thought it'd be kind of cool to show you guys uh, some of the editing that I've been doing. So this is an old photo from the 1800s. I think I believe it's called a dendrotype. Uh, it's, it's pretty cool. It's actually glass right here, and it's got this weird leathery background. And what I've been doing is actually editing um, this photo to repair it. Um, this is an old family photo. I do not know if this guy is actually my family, but it was in a large family collection. What I've been trying to do is repair old family photos. It's a bit of a hobby. I'd like to maybe do it as a bit of a side business, maybe. Um, but while I've been doing other things outside of YouTube, real life stuff, um, it's kind of a fun little hobby that I've been doing, and I thought other people might enjoy um, seeing some of the work I've done. So this is what this guy looks like. Um, we have some assumptions who he is. Um, of course, uh, these old photos, because they're so old, often you're so far removed from these original people that you really have no means of getting a name to them unless you have other photos that are already labeled, which is kind of unfortunate. But regardless, it's actually quite fun to like still repair some of these old photos and I hope to finish this off tonight. I'll show you what I've done so far. So this is all, all work that I've been doing, but I, I created a background for him. So I got rid of all of the uh, kind of messiness. And for some reason on this layer, I also colored that in a bit. Um, I repaired some of his tie. I think this layer could probably be used for some other things, but um, eh. And then I've been kind of coloring him in, but I fixed his face. So I got his hair in, this is, uh, let me show you, so this is what it was before. It looks like he's got makeup on, but really there's not much you can do about it. Um, and then you have his hair, I don't know how much more I can do to that without making it look too ridiculous. He's already kind of getting, you gotta be careful because you start getting this almost uncanny valley approach where he's starting to look almost like a, a drawing and kind of like a, I don't know, like it's not, it's not close enough to reality and it kind of gets uncomfortable. And he's starting to get there with too much of the, the drawing in his face. So I think right now it's not too bad, but uh, I can definitely see it getting a, a little bit weird. So at the moment I have been coloring him his, uh, his um, arm, but he appears to be holding what looks like almost like a flag. And this is what's kind of cool. So none of us knew this. So like this is what the photo looks like again. So when you kind of see it, your, your eyes kind of get drawn to his chest and center area. But not a lot to this like bottom area, and I couldn't tell because, like I said, this is like some weird fabric. You can almost kind of see it right here. I like have the photo cropped a bit, but it, it's a glass. It's a little glass piece, and like I don't know, you, you don't really notice it until like I started like uh, editing it. And all these colors are a little dramatic, but I'm gonna color them in. You just you got to make them a bit more dramatic to start with, to uh, fade them out so it looks a bit more natural course like I said uh, there is a these are old photos and uh, you have to be careful how much you do of course it's always gonna have a bit of a cartoony look to it simply because what I have here is a um, there's a lot of information lost like it's hard to tell um, what is even going on in some of these old photos and I'm drawing over a lot and I've done a lot of photo repair, um, typically nothing this dramatic, this is damaged. A lot of it is removing old lines and such. But this is probably the most dram damaged photo I've ever had to fix, or didn't have to, but I've been working on it. So, if anybody's got questions, I've already seen the chat. Hello everybody, I got Mark, I got James and Lisa. So, hello everyone. And uh, what I'm going to do is just going to work on this for a little while, and hopefully I can get it done by tonight. And I will be posting the uh, results once we get uh, this going. So maybe put it on Twitter. Who knows? So it's probably random. Everybody's probably subscribed to me, and they're kind of like, "Oh, hey, Code Rogue." Um, everybody's just like, "Where have you been?" And long story. I've actually been trying to make a video to kind of discuss that. It's been kind of awkward. Um, in short, since everybody here is listening in. Um, where have you been, man? Um, I'll tell you. Uh, 
I've been finishing, I finished school, but I have been a bit not too happy with the state of YouTube. There's that. Um, I've had some aspects about the YouTube educational scene I've been kind of disappointed with. But really, the big thing that's been holding me back is um, I, I haven't really told a lot of people why I haven't been here, and it's been kind of making me a little, like, upset because um, uh, there's a lot to it, but essentially, the short story is I was in university and I was dedicating myself to my YouTube channel almost extensively. I wasn't doing almost... Uh, all my free time was going to YouTube, I got to a point where YouTube was becoming such a priority that I was, I was picking YouTube over school. And that had, there was a lot of backstory to why that made me really uncomfortable. But one of the big things was I felt like a bit of it, I, I was going to become a hypocrite. Here I was in school and I was putting YouTube before my own education. And how could I be a YouTube educator? and not value my own education. And when I got 100,000 subscribers, if anybody kind of remembers that far back, it was in 2016, I slowed down making videos. Um, I, had, I didn't know if you, I would ever be able to make YouTube into like a, a, a permanent career. And it would, that would have been kind of cool, but I, I knew that if I was going to sit in front of people and try to encourage learning, and education, there's no way I could ever feel comfortable with myself if I didn't put my own education first. So I, in 2016, right around the time I got 100,000 subscribers, I, um, I chose school. And that was one of the hardest decisions. There was a lot to it, but I couldn't, I wouldn't be comfortable in the position I'm in with the amount of influence I was gaining at the time. Um, and that was, that was a hard decision because I realized that could come at the consequence of my um, my YouTube channel ever becoming popular. And But I chose I was not going to be a hypocrite. There's no way I was going to be a hypocrite. So, uh, long story short, and that's like an oversimplification of the entire situation. I I chose school over YouTube. And I, I did it because I knew that if I was going to be an influential person or I had any chance of influencing other people to make uh, good decisions in their life I had to do that for myself as well so anyway there's a lot to that I, I was that's one of the things that's been holding me back even from getting back into YouTube because I had that opportunity stolen from me once I'm not a lot of people even know this but I had a YouTube channel uh, a series before think fact and I used to make uh, uh, video game videos specifically over Pokemon uh, I don't even keep up with it nowadays it's kind of funny but what ended up happening was, is when I was in high school, uh, probably around the age of 16-ish, 15, 16, um, one of the kids at my school found out that I had a, a, uh, was making videos, and I had, at the time I had about 700 subscribers back in 2010, which is pretty good considering the community and the size of YouTube at the time. Well, what ended up happening was, is he made a big scene in front of a lot of people at my school about it, and I was so embarrassed and panicking because... He found out about it. He had a whole bunch of people laughing at me. That I, um, I immediately after school, because um, I had an after school program, I deleted every single video off my um, my channel. Because at the time, 2010, I only recently had released the uh, the um, ability. I'm not even working here. Let me switch my tools down. I keep like having the wrong tools. Anyway, I uh, they didn't have the ability, or at least they recently put it out to in um, un. In, Unenlist? No, uh, oh goodness, what's the word? Uh, not unlist. Yeah, unlist. Okay, unlist videos and that sort of stuff. And that was just new when I didn't have the ability to do it on my phone. All I could do is delete videos. So I deleted every single thing I had on my channel after that. And I was so afraid to let people on my channel know what happened to me that I didn't post anything. All these people just had no idea. And I don't know, I... I had no intentions of telling people, like, I, I had backed away from, like, I knew people knew I was putting my education first, but I don't think they knew the real reason why I was putting my education first, and I had the opportunity to explain to people what happened, 
robbed from me once. Basically, in order to save face at high school, I couldn't even tell, I couldn't tell any of the people watching my YouTube stuff why I stepped away. And, I don't know, it's been bugging me because I do have that opportunity, and I didn't even intend to tell people any of, like, this type of stuff. But, I don't know, I feel like I compelled, almost, because I, I don't know. I don't know. I have a lot of things in my mind. I've been wanting to make YouTube videos, and I still have a lot of them planned. My thing is, is just, my motivation gets a bit drained, because I, I feel like I, I've done all this stuff, and I haven't told anybody what's going on. So, part of what I want to do is make a bit of a video that explains some of the stuff that, like, happened, and what I want to, what my vision is for the future, and go from there. I'm never probably going to recapture that audience that I had back in 2016 anytime soon, if at all. I don't know, maybe... But I'm going to try to keep doing stuff. I just think, like, maybe some of these live streams are easy for me to get, like, reach out to people. Because at the end of the day, I, what matters to me is the community, you guys. That's why I've always spent so much time, like, actually... Um, I've spent so much... Um, sorry, I'm just, like, multitasking. I've spent so much time talking, like, getting back to people in the comments section. It's just, that's... You guys have always made it the most fun. Speaking of comments, I have, um, I've always liked this tight-knit small community. feels like just hanging out with a bunch of friends. I agree. That is, that's how I feel. Like, I, the big YouTube stuff, I, I don't have a problem with big audiences, but I can, I can kind of see how sometimes, like, people get lost, and I don't really care for that. Like, I really enjoy being able to actually talk to everybody individually. That's why I've always spent so much time, pot, like, psychologically like possible um to get back to everybody it's kind of it's a bit daunting it's gotten but i've always enjoyed being able to talk to people because one of the best things about youtube for me is when somebody can give you a different perspective on something that you never had yourself and that's always made it fun for me and that's what i've always enjoyed I, i've always felt which is probably a bit of a weird twist but the comment section has always been my favorite part of youtube because i've always had the most fun talking to people and them giving me different perspectives on things, because that's, that's what I've always loved doing. My, the, what, what has always given me a drive to make videos is getting people to think differently about stuff, uh, think about things in a different way, to think about issues they never even thought about before, um, and get different input. Um, one thing that college has done to me, for better or for worse, is it's made, and, and YouTube has done this too, both, like there's been this weird twist, but it's made me very aware of limitations of my own knowledge and that has been really challenging because I, I feel very uncomfortable making videos nowadays to some degree because I don't want to start oops, I don't want to start going outside my bubble my, what I'm comfortable with and that is that gets me because I don't want to start talking about things I don't have a lot of experience in and I don't know a lot of youtubers like they just they read books and then they they, they discuss that book in a topic, and I, I've, I value that. I think there's a lot of value, but it's just, to me, I've always, I've gotten more stress, and maybe it's not even logical sometimes. I don't know, but I've gotten more stress simply uh, uh, thinking about how much do I really know about a subject. If I, if I discuss something, am I actually going to give everybody, like, a contextualized uh, discussion, or am I simply just... Um, not really taking enough into consideration to make the topic that I want to cover even worth doing. Um, someone's probably done a better job, so... I don't know. Let me see what else other people have said. Do you think people from the Pokemon channel have found things that I... I have maybe two people, one that I am relatively consistent, that I, I know from that, that, have fo that has followed me. Um, so that... that uh, there are There is one person that I know, I follow him on Twitter, he follows me, we're semi-okay. We're, we're relatively, um, we're with one another. Um, hi, India. Oh my gosh. I'd love to go to India one day. I want to go to India really bad. I think that's a beautiful place. There's a lot of gorgeous architecture. I am a, I love or, um, architecture so much. And India has so many beautiful buildings. I just, I could, I could live, like, all around, if I had enough like time in my life, I would love to live everywhere just to look at the buildings. That's what I just, oh, good architecture. Mm. Okay, 
Um, there's certainly a gap in the type of content, but it would have happened, right? Uh, maybe. Um, did you encourage me to pursue YouTube? I respect the crap out of you. Thank you very much, Aaron. Um, it's cool to get to actually talk to people. Um, I'd always recommend anybody who wants uh, help with YouTube. I don't know if I probably I don't know. I don't really promote this that much, but I, I um, if you private message me on or send me a message on Twitter, I've I've been doing this for maybe like years, but I give people pointers on what they should do for YouTube, um, what they should take into consideration, uh, anything really. It's um, it's really quite quite handy if I get the time I, I don't mind talking to people I've had quite a few people I'm actually helping somebody tomorrow I'm gonna give them a few hours I've actually done a lot more of that is just give people advice on how to uh, make YouTube channels which I could probably do a little bit here if any of you are video editing and you don't have software or um, let's say you you have pirated and you're trying to get uh, some better software uh, that's available like cheaply Look up DaVinci Resolve. If any of you have not heard of DaVinci Resolve and you make YouTube videos, look it up. There was a company called, um, uh, oh, Phantom? Uh, geez. They, it was a hardware company that made cameras and they recently purchased a software company that makes uh, video editing software and it's free. And it's as good as Final Cut and Adobe um, I use Final Cut primarily, but it is, it's really good. I just, I, I don't have much of a reason for it because I've already purchased uh, Final Cut Pro. But um, I'd recommend anybody who wants, like, good software that's literally free, a uh, Black Magic, that's who it was, good call, yeah, Black Magic. They were the, uh, the company that bought it, and it is, it is very nice. I'd recommend that to anybody who is trying to get some good video editing software. Um, it's really nice. So, for anybody who doesn't know, I um, have this really old photo, and uh, it's part of one of my family collection. It's from the 1800s. I don't know if I'm related to this guy. It was just the oldest photo, or among the oldest, that we had. I had a few, uh, let me, uh, I think it's on my desktop. It's OBS, that will give you a stroke. Okay, uh, yeah, right here, look at this. This is, I think, the oldest photo, family photo I have. And look at that, that's called a tin type. And it's painted, and this is colored by the way to some degree, but it's, they get these faces, which are on it, and then they actually have a, this weird metal background, and they paint a little bit on it to give them some like depth and like, uh, I don't know, like, like they do it to give some color. But this is an actual physical photo that I've owned, we just scanned it today, that's why I've been, um, I've been really obsessed with photos. And by George, if you, if any of you are old school Think Fact uh, viewers, there's a video that I made a long time ago about uh, being forgotten, and there's a photo of a guy in there who had a hat and a big mustache, and I was discussing how we didn't know who he was. I found out who he was today. I can't believe it. I almost want to do a follow-up video of this guy, um, and yeah, his last name is Elliot. Uh, he's a he married, I believe, into my family, so I'm not directly related to him. I'm related to his wife, um, and yeah, it was the craziest thing. I had no idea that we had it, but I've been finding all these old photos and stuff, so I love old photos. I, I feel very fortunate that I have a family that's very photo-centric and loves to keep uh, old photos. We've done a lot to protect them. Um, not all my branches have one. Um, the only reason why I have some of these people that are this old, this would have been like 1840s. This is almost a 200 year old photo, which is crazy. Um, uh, the only reason why I have them is because we had one specific branch of our family that did well after the Revolutionary War, uh, Revolutionary War in the United States. They got land and they got into lumber and they just did well. They, had, they were able to take a lot of photos. So we have like, this one branch, it's actually right here, Legro, it's not spelt like that, it's L-E-G-R-O-W. And um, yeah, there's a, a lot of uh, stuff I've been doing, but I love old photos, so I've been, uh, that's why I've been going out of my way to just try to repair this guy. Um, we think his last name might be Creasy, but I, I, this could be the only photo of this man left in existence, literally. I have no idea. We have no idea who he is. He was just in a family collection. He could have been a family friend for all we know. But I'm trying to figure out what this is because this looks like a flag. And if you see here, you can see the fabric right here. 
which is really cool. Like it's like he's holding a. He's, there's no hands, so he's holding some sort of flag, and there's a star. It looks like here, and the reason why I think it's that, and not like a, a scratch, is because there's another one. It looks like like right over here. Like there's like a line, but that could be a scratch. I don't know, but it kind of looks like he's holding like some sort of flag. Like there's a bit of a fold up here. If I get rid of the color, you can see something like right there. So I um. Remember this is dramatic because I'm going to be painting over it a bit, but um, I got his pant, his arm to look like that. If you knew what it looked like before, like you'd be like, like ruined every time like you, wa you watch Bob Ross and you just like ruined and then he fixes it like last second because he like blends it all together. Um, yeah. Uh, Indy would be great. I'm looking at the comments now. There is some old school guys here for sure. I can see the resemblance. <laughs> Um, having a video from Elliot would be fun, especially if you have some stories about him. That's just it. Um, I don't know still a lot about him, but we have a ton of photos of him. I think I actually have one in here. Let me see if I have it, because I, I, uh, got, like, there's a lot of photos right here. But I think I took one of him right here. Okay, well, all these photos are popping up. Hold up. Okay, uh, right here. This is him. This is the guy. Look at this dude. That is some gnarly comb over. I'm impressed. But hopefully, I know in my luck, I'll probably have one too one day. So um, I can't give him any flack. <laughs> but this is the guy. Um, this is the mustache. If you, I don't have the photo, the other photo on me. But um, that's the dude. Like, it's blew my mind. Um, he had a, f like, all, there was all these old photos taken some. So I don't, uh, I don't know. Like, they've been passed around the family. But this is the guy, so. That's pretty cool. I like that's one of the things like uh, we found like five or six photos of him. It kind of like it was like when we found out it was like a cascade of like figuring out who he was. So I was kind of surprised. But yeah, I was not expecting that. I was just going in to scan old family photos and organize them a bit. We put them in these plastic uh, these plastic uh, oh sheets that you put like almost in a binder. And they're non-acidic, so a lot of these old photos break down because some of the paper, or especially wood, um, they uh, oh, uh, they they break the photos down. So one of the things I've been trying to do is get as many of them scanned and put them in special uh, uh, plastic wraps to keep them from breaking down. So, okay, well, so yeah, I have become quite unproductive since I started this uh, voice. Yeah, everybody's like. Look, I've done maybe like a few swipes over here. So I'll get a little bit more productive. People are just probably like looking and just like, anybody who doesn't have this sound on is probably like, what is this guy doing? But, all right, let's get through this. I'll answer a few more questions and then we'll do more. You should grow a sweet stash. Woo, woo. Okay, let me see if I can pronounce your name. He says, I bet you can't pronounce it. So is it, um, Dast gear, dast gear, or dast gear, dast gear. Probably wrong. That's the we got. See, English got rid of all those fancy accent marks, but sometimes it backs uh, backfires. Um, it's a possible. Um, it could possibly be a cloth that covers his legs in the photo if he didn't want his legs show. That's a good point. Um, looking through our family photos. There was one of those weird photos where they took a picture of a dead person. Um, very, I mean, photography was new and a lot of those social taboos were uh, still um, being established. I don't think it was necessarily at the time all that weird to take photos of dead, I mean, granted, we take photos of dead people all the time, so maybe I, I can't say anything, but. Um, yeah, we had one where this guy was holding his uh, dead child uh, and it was just a photo. It was. Very bizarre and a bit on, uh, un, I don't know, uncouth might not be the right word. I don't know. It was awkward, uh, but I wouldn't show that out of respect, and I'd probably get demonetized really hard if I showed a picture of a dead baby. So I'm not, uh, I didn't scan it anyway. Not that, we had too many to be had to scan. We have maybe about 100 of these old types of photos. Pretty much from one family, because my, uh, my grandmother, my great, like, great, 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 great grandmother, um, she came from a, a well-to-do family and moved really far away. So her family kept sending her photos, and that's why we have a lot of these old photos. So, Yep, kind of cool. 
I like them. Okay, this is not, I was using the paintbrush, I think, before. Yeah, no, yeah, okay, let's try this out. I try to do like it, uh, like a, a hard under like color, and then I try to uh, I paint over, I smudge it, and then I put like a dark layer over it. You can kind of see some of the uh, streaks right here that I've been painting over, but I uh, I give some depth. But the problem is, is like I said, these are so old, and like you, there's got to be some like I, I call I, how I state it is some information has been lost. There's no way to identify some of the stuff, so I'm just gonna. How does it look underneath here? He's got, it's brighter up here. So what I'm gonna have to do probably is uh, make this a bit brighter. Probably do that. All right. Okay, too bright, too bright. Let's uh, try this. Okay, that's still too bright. All right. I don't know, every time I do a live stream, I'm drawing. So, and that's probably like not a thing that anybody, I don't really even draw that much like real life. I just, I like doing photo repair and drawing on rivers. So that's my, uh, I guess that's my hobby. All right, that's a bit dramatic, but I'm gonna blend it later. I just need to get like something like around here. It is a bit, it's maybe a bit too dramatic. Well, we'll, we'll go with it. We'll just make it work. Okay, so his arm comes around here and it goes under the weird blanket thing and it kind of stops there. I think it, uh, where's it? Like, you can kind of make it out a little bit, like it kind of goes here. But as I'm saying, information loss. There, like I could be drawing some of this stuff completely wrong. It's just you have no way of telling. You, it's just, you're out of luck. So it's gonna, as Bill O'Reilly says, we'll do it live. <laughs> well, uh, <laughs> gosh, <laughs> what a, w a weird person to quote. Um, I, don't know, I just remember that meme video of him all the time and I just, makes me chuckle. Uh, I saw people talking about it quickly. How old are these? This photo is probably from the 1850s or 1840s. I doubt it's from 1860s. Uh, like I said, it's, this is glass. Like, so this guy, everything that is dark is see-through and it has this weird like cloth that was painted over with almost like a rubbery substance. And you put that behind it and it gives it like color. So. The see-throughness of the glass determines how dark certain things are. Um, like, uh, if I break, like I said right here, like you can see the glass right here, like there's the leathery thing. It doesn't perfectly fit. It's a shrunk a bit, I think, and it's weird. But that is the material. You can see it a bit there. Um, and you can see that this was in some sort of frame because for whatever reason, the, the white stuff here is like broken down, like around where the, the frame would have been. But there was no frame for it. So, um, I don't know. This is an old family photo. I'd like to repair it. I mean, it might not even be family. I don't, I don't care. I just want it repaired. Because I've already got this far. And I kind of enjoy this stuff. It's, it's fun. It's different. Not a lot of people do old photo repairs. And I was just working on it tonight. And I was like, hey, let's try to do a... Uh, let's remind all the people who are subscribed to me that I exist. And... <laughs> That's not fun. I don't like that. That's that's too much. Undo that. That's that's a bit dramatic. Jesus. So there's a darkness here, so I'm gonna follow that a bit. So like you can kind of see the zigzag. So I'm gonna go down that. Bada bing, bada boom. That's really all I'm gonna be doing is like this type of stuff. And I just kind of, I try to take as much of what is there. That'd be pretty cool. We had a. Uh, uh, do I have the photo over here? Let me show. If I got this, this is the funniest photo I think. I, right here. Is this it? No. Oh, where is it? this guy? Look at this guy. Look at this guy. Charles Legro. He's got a freaking cigar. Look at this guy. His mustache. The, but here's the thing. This man probably hasn't worked a day, a hard day's work in his life. Look how nice his hands are. Like, this is the 1800s. This guy's hands are very nice. I almost thought they looked like they were like fake. That's how nice they are. And that, that implies to me that this man does not do hard work. So he might look cool, but this guy's a pencil pusher. <laughs> this guy sits in the office and like bosses around all the other people. He's sitting on a freaking body of like a wolf. Like look at this like furry thing he's 
He's on. But yeah, Charles Legro. Charles W. Legro. Legros. Ugh, I think they're Huguenot. I couldn't tell. I, they, they. I have some of these guys. They fought in the Revolutionary War, so they're not Quakers. But a lot of my direct ancestors, who I share my last name with, were are, were Quakers. They were very anti-war, anti-slavery. Um, so I, I can take some pride in. Uh, but uh, yeah, they didn't. They didn't fight. So there was some conversions or something happening. I think not a lot of Catholics became Protestant. Not. I mean. Not in the U.S., I feel. Not just to do it. So, and it was a male. It would have been a male Legro who married into... No. Yeah. We believe that the Legros married into the Quaker, like a Quaker family. So they then converted, so. We can't... We don't know. There's a lot of lost history in some of this stuff, so. It's kind of, kind of... It's legend and myth at this point. All right, let's fill that in. Danny, that is a Danny boy. You should become Vsauce 4. If I did a Vsauce 4, I'd want to do children's programming. I, I don't know. I, I'd probably like you all like, what? But I, I don't know. There is, I think the YouTube community for, like the educational side of YouTube for children is garbage. Absolutely garbage. And if you know anything about me, I am very, like, proactive towards like being like adamant about children's education and children's safety and children like like fun fact about me i don't know maybe fun or not i was actually going to join the military uh before uh, I, I did end up going to college but the reason why i couldn't is because i couldn't ever be put in a situation where i hurt accidentally like or hurt a child like i that was one of the major reasons i couldn't be put in a situation Especially if I had to serve overseas where I'd hurt a child. I just, that kill, I couldn't do it. So I didn't do military because of that. And that is, true story, that's one of the reasons, that's probably the major reason why I couldn't, I didn't do military. I, I, oof. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I am very, I don't know, I, I guess it's like a Mr. Rogers impact on me. Like, I was, I, I was, I watched Mr. Rogers as a kid. and Growing up, I really appreciated his approach. I think, like, having safe environments and having, a, like, a good educational, like, source for kids that don't, like, there's, so, like, a lot of the stuff on YouTube I find, even on, and I respect them. I, I think that it's probably one of the better things, um, I think it's SciShow Kids. That's one of the better ones. But I still feel like a lot of children's programming is patronizing. Um, it's, it, it's, like... It talk to like children like you talk to a cat. I hate that. I would never talk to a child like they're like they're stupid or like I need to ex like I think you can you can treat a child and even like young adults like like teenagers like if you tr talk to them like like they're a human being like you talk to like anybody like a human decency um, you get a better response from them. I think that's one of the big disconnects with teenagers like if you get like that teenager phase is like the adults treat teenagers to some degree very almost i mean and you can argue that there's there's reason for it i'm not gonna but uh n without like a certain level of respect that they treat another adult and there's a lot of c cultural context and stuff like that but i think from a psychological level people tend to appreciate when you treat them with like a, a certain level of human decency like like intellectually and stuff and i think if you talk to a child in a, a manner that is like I don't know. It doesn't patronize them. I think that's the best word I can think of right now. Um, you get a better response from them. So. I know. If I were to do Vsauce 4, I would love to call it Vsauce for Kids. And I'd love to do things. I wouldn't do just that. like, excuse, But I'd love to do like a good like children's YouTube series. I think that would be really awesome. Because I think there's not a lot. And it would be like actual cool like questions kids would want. It's not like, what's a zebra? It'd be more like a... Why is like, like, why, where, how do trees grow bigger? And then like, you'd have like a simple discussion about that. Or I actually had like a whole list of questions that like the tree one isn't like a good one. But like, I had like a series of cool kids questions that could be explained simply, but are elaborate enough that a kid would probably be like actually wonder about. And I don't know. I just, I have little cousins and whenever, like I'm the guy that when they ask why, I will, like, try to... I love to think of an answer that's simple enough for them to understand. That 
is what I love. You, you, you say more with less, and I'm a very wordy person. So if you can like figure out how to like gear like a, a conversation and stuff for like children, make it simple enough for them to understand, that's pretty cool in my book. Because often if you can make it something simple enough for a kid, you can make it simple enough for anybody. So, which is uh, kind of fun. So let's see, what are people talking about? That exactly, Mr. Rogers talks to the audience like a person. I think, um, I think that uh, that is that's a big thing. That's had a huge, profound impact. Mr. Rogers had a massive impact on me growing up. Uh, I had a bit of a complicated life, though. Of course, I don't like to say a trouble. Like I, I hate like these pity boxes. I had crap happen in my life. Everybody's had crap happen in their life. I don't think there's a lot of people in this world that are like. Uh, perfect and people use their sob story sometimes to kind of I don't know I think there's you can textualize a thought like a sad story like if you've had complications in your life but I don't I don't know I don't like to like make it out like I've had it so much worse than people it's kind of weird I there's like I know a lot of youtubers that have been have basically a, a silver spoon their entire life and they they're a bit like out of touch with sometimes the hurt that they have. Like and they don't realize that some people have had a lot of hurt too. And I, don't know. Oh, I like to. I'm very. So I like to really think things through. So like when I do like these live streams, like I really almost like. Did I put that on the wrong? Oh, I'm drawing on the wrong layer like a dork, and I, I am. Oh my gosh! Look at all that work I just did on the wrong layer. I can't even believe myself. What am I doing? Ah, oh. luckily I can pick it up. No, I can't pick that up very easy because I. Ah, uh. what am I doing? Okay. Well, clearly, I can't multitask. <laughs> well, this is so. Woo. Okay. Let's see how big this is. How much did I goof up? Okay, I goofed up quite a bit. So, uh, ooh. All right. I <laughs> don't even know. Where does this start? Okay, it starts like up here. Oh, man. Okay, not as clean as I wanted it, but I can do it with it. All right, let's delete that. All right, now let's paste that on this. Hopefully I get it to fit. That's not too bad. Uh, yeah. Okay, so Aaron said that he was, he says, I am a army veteran. I am glad I was never deployed. Well, thank you for your uh, service. I know that I've, I have no problem, like, I don't want to, like, demonize the I know a lot of people, like, try to demonize the military. I just, I have a lot of respect for the people who do it. I just recognize my own limits, and that's that. Like, I, I know people who are, like, just, hate everybody who's military. I just think it's a complicated thing. I know people who join the military strictly because of financial reasons. I know people who join it because there's a family, like an, 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 an like a, almost like a, a cultural thing in their family. I wouldn't give someone flag for that. I know people that do, and that always bugs me. I just know I've had every single, and this is, this is very true, every single person in my family who's ever been deployed came back with severe mental health issues. I've had family members recent, like recently um, commit suicide um, over some of the things they saw. And, um, I've had an, I had a, a great uncle, great great uncle who fought in D-Day. He was messed up after he came back from the war. I had an uncle who fought in Vietnam and his job, which is, this is the story that, that really pushed me over the edge. His job was legitimately to blow up bridges with uh, people coming over them and often the Viet Cong would put women and children in front. And that, that screwed him up. And I, it's very sad. And like, it breaks my heart because he's a wonderful, wonderful human being. But like, his, the PTSD just, it's horrible. So, I, I just got it. It was a bit much for me. And I, I couldn't. I don't think this looks really good. It looks, it's gonna look really bad right now, especially. But I can do some editing. So I'm going to blend this all in. Let's do that. Yeah, my family has a bad history of PTSD when they come back from war. 
if they're deployed. I had like my uh, I have a family member who recently um, committed suicide, and he uh, was deployed in Afghanistan, and that is that really hit my family hard. So. I just feel bad for the people in these countries. I just, the children, like, ugh. Can't, can't hurt that. I just wanna, I'm getting emotional just thinking about some of this stuff. Ooh. The people, ah, war. Alice Cooper's kids. Whoa. That's pretty cool, Aaron. Um, Misty, I will not be coloring this in. I actually only repair black and white photos because it is just, it's too much to do uh, other, like, color. Color, like, this is just black and white. You know how intense this is? And also, fun fact about me, I'm a bit colorblind. Um, or I am colorblind mildly. I don't think you can just be a bit, like, you either are or not. I am a bit colorblind. Um, specifically, with, well, I've done tests and it says I have red green, but I have never had a problem distinguishing red green. I've only had problems with purple and blue, which is a other form of colorblindness. But I've never been diagnosed with that, so I, I don't know. I've never actually gone to a, an actual. I've always I just done those tests online, so take those for a grain of salt, I guess. But I, uh, I don't know. Okay, whoa, okay, that's a bit, that's a bit sharp. Let's try doing this a little, eh, a bit, I did this in the 30s on the other side. Let's try 30. Yeah, that's not too bad. Okay, let's see if we can get this to fade so it doesn't look like, like I just scribbled on this guy. Ah, uh, look better on the other side. Like, this is, this side, I should probably do. This side was more detailed, though, than this side. So it was easier to like get some of those folds in on his jacket. Uh, this side was just garbage. This was the garbage side. It was not fun. A lot of good detail. A lot of uh, information missing, shall we? So let's see if we can get this to go down here. What are people saying? Maybe you should talk with your eye doctor about it then. Yeah. But I live in America, and eye doctors require money. And <laughs> I, unfortunately, have lost my insurance to go to an eye doctor. So, that's one of the things I've been trying to do is money stuff. That was one of the things I realized when I did my, I decided to focus a bit more, or I put my priorities in schools. I realized that YouTube probably wouldn't be the, uh, the job I always wanted. So, and I accepted that. I wasn't gonna be a hypocrite. That was, so. Yeah, that was a consequence I accept. Now I gotta get a jib. I'm actually applying at a place recently. I gotta send them a cover letter tomorrow. I was gonna send it today, but I ended up uh, getting a bit busy. But, let's see, I'm gonna, work, I'm gonna apply to a new station, so we'll see how that works. And I'd like to get back into YouTube. Actually, it would be really nice if I could get access to some of their facility. And do, but I want to do different types of YouTube videos as well. I've been doing a lot of uh, thinking about like the state of YouTube and stuff, and I think it'd be cool if someone who's going to be a bit critical of things on YouTube also gave advice about like how to repair them. I mean, I'll grant for instance, I love more just as much as the other guys. Some of these big YouTube criticizers, to some degree, you have like H3H3 and iDubs and all them. But it's one thing to identify a problem with somebody. It's another to give them an opportunity to like redeem themselves and give them a path to redemption. Like, I think it's, I have come to the understanding personally that it is almost impossible to get somebody to uh, change if the consequences of changing are greater than uh, staying the same. And I've always been a, uh, I keep saying I'm always, I, I've been an advocate towards the concept of truth over consequence to some degree. And that essentially means that I'm willing to take a person who's willing to recognize that they did something wrong and 
be willing to forgive them, um, obviously within reason. I'm talking about YouTube stuff. I'm not talking about something like murder. But um, there's people who make mistakes on YouTube, do stuff that's uncritical. Um, uh, I think that if they just thought of it more and they had a bit of a, an escape, like they could recognize and admit fault and change, um, that would be good. And the first thing I would challenge is uh, the YouTube educational side, because I'll tell you what, I have never been so disappointed with the, uh, the, the citations, the lack thereof, shall I say, on the YouTube educational side, it is, it's a shame. You, like, even people like, uh, Gray, CGP Gray, who I have a lot of respect for and I enjoy his videos thoroughly, doesn't cite his sources for anything that would require it. I'm like, what are you doing, Gray? He doesn't even seem to care sometimes. I get a little annoyed by that. So, okay, looking at this, this is, like, there's literally a swirl here. So I know this looks ridiculous on here, but there is literally a swirl there. You can't say there's not a swirl there. That being said, I think his, like his arm is big. Like you can see the line right there. So I can't figure out why his arm looks like a giant, I don't know, like an attached ham to his arm. Like this doesn't make, the size doesn't make sense to me. Uh, let me get rid of the, uh, I mean, The lines seem to make sense there. But maybe his arm is actually thinner. That's hard to tell. This looks horrible. Like, none of you have seen any of the work I've done, so all you've seen is this crap side I just did here. And everyone's probably like, did he really draw the rest of this? Ooh. Shouldn't have picked the hard side to do when I started showing off this fun video. Get all the, get all the fun stuff out of the way already. All right, let's try some, uh, let's, let's do, uh, let's just erase this. I think I'm just gonna, uh, I think I'm not gonna try to copy his sleeve here, because this is ridiculous. This just looks like, I don't know, like the background in the Rugrats cartoons, like, like all the squiggles and stuff, like, it's all just kind of like the aesthetic that's kind of almost weirdly done. That's what I feel like that looked like. It's not a fun look. This is horrible. So, his arm might actually, there's, like if you follow the edge of like, well, I'll just do it. Like it might even come down here, but it it doesn't fit. Like what is with his arm? Like if you look, like there is something here. It, it might, his arm might be this line. That, that is a possibility. That'd make his harem look less like a giant ham attached to his body. So, hey, you're still alive. Yeah, I am still alive. It's a miracle. I love you too, comrade. Notice me, dad. I notice you, Artie. Look at that jacket. It's too big for him. Yes, it is very big. I think he's packing a lot of heat. You have to be willing to allow people to redeem themselves. Yeah, I do believe that. I think redemption is the only way to convince people to do the right thing. You gotta give them a path to redeem themselves. Otherwise, they don't. And that's sometimes not the easiest thing to do. Forgiveness is a very, very powerful tool. And a lot of people only maybe like associate that with like a, I don't know, like a religious connotation. But I think like there's a lot of value behind the concept without having to have it tied to too much like like it's just the idea of being able to forgive people from a, a personal standpoint is i've actually been planning this video like i'm going to be doing a video on forgiveness like biologically speaking from your own personal standpoint and from a social perspective it's been a lot of work i'm watching a lot of ted talks and getting people's perspective about their story as well which has been kind of fun um forgiveness is a really really special concept I am going to erase this. I don't know why that line is there. What is that line from? There's this weird squiggle here. What? What the heck is that? Oh, okay. It's the this layer. The one that I goofed up on. Did all the goofs. Okay. Well, that's out. Okay. This is going to be... So i got to redo his whole arm here. And I don't know how the heck I'm going to do this. Whatever the heck this is. This weird blanket. <laughs> going to... I gotta redo his arm here, this is bad. 
I just, I gotta commit. I just gotta, gotta do it. All right, let's figure out where the heck his arm is. I can't really find it. That is clear, this line, this is clearly something. There's no, that's just not like, that doesn't have, I know there's a lot of scratches on this, but that is something. Convince me that it's not. Now, jeez. Uh, I want to believe he has like this weird, like really skinny arm and ham thing, but it's clearly not the case. That just by a lot, like anatomically speaking, his arm. It's. Uh, I mean, there's this line right here. And I feel like there's this darkness, right? Like I feel like there's this darkness. <laughs> I feel like the aesthetic, man, like, that's really, I think, like, his arms are, like, I see, like, a break, like, there's this kind of, like, fade right here. I think that's an arm. That makes sense as an arm. I think that's the arm. Yeah, because it's brighter here. It's a bit of a triangle. So I'm going to make this, let's erase a bit of this. I can kind of see. I just got to keep making this go away so I can keep seeing it. Yeah, there's this bright right here. All right, let's try this out. So let's do some magic. Let me uh, get this. All right, let's do the brush. Woo! Okay, so clearly there's an arm thing here. So I'm going to have this go up here. We're gonna go like that. I think that looks like an arm. Like, this could be an arm. Like, that amount of space was necessary. I think that's right. I think that's how an arm works. I'm pretty sure. And then, we'll be able to uh, fade this all in a bit. I'm pretty sure that's how arms work. <laughs> okay, so, we have this. So, there's that darkness there. What is that? What are you hiding? What is under the blanket? What is it that you are hiding? Why? Are your hands like lobster claws or something? Like, what is this? Why is there a blanket? There's so many questions. And we're, it's too late. I need a time machine to get some of these, so. Ah, I wanna believe he's got lobster claws. I feel like that's my favorite alternate timeline. Be sure to drink plenty of water, yes. You seriously don't see the gun? Is there really a gun? There's no way, like that's not a gun. That is, that's my bad drawing and I drew that. There is, that is not a gun. What is going on here? He's clearly wearing leather because there's no way anything's that shiny that's not leather. So that's leather, he's got a button there. He's got a cloth here. There is no gun. I would be impressed if there was a gun. I, I am I am doubtful though. The existence of the gun is in doubt. I see this, it was like a pocketbook. Like, just like a pocketbook. I drew that line there because there was an actual line here. I don't know what that's about. Maybe that's, like you can see this, like there's this weird like, his, his jacket like got destroyed and they put like a, a piece of leather there, some sort. That's not a gun. Is it? Does that look metal? Like there's like a little thing right here. I think this is just a piece of fabric that was put on to his thing here, but it could be part of the flag. But it looks like it, like there's a rip here and they just got a, a like a square piece of leather and just like put it. Cause you see like a button there and a button there. So. Ugh. He's just hiding lobster claws. That's what he's doing. He's got lobster claws for hands. Science can confirm this. Let's, oh my Lord. How do you fix this arm? There is something, I can't tell what is going on. This, like if you look over here, he's got this thing here. His, his hand just nice sneakily goes under the blanket. But it almost looks like he's holding, like I wanna believe like there's like a, a tooth here and he's just like, I'm the tooth fairy. Like, or something, I, like there's a pillow, or this. What is on this? What is this? Is that a ring? Is that an eyeball? I feel like, 
Maybe he's like, this is what how they used to propose to people. He's like, you know what? I'm going to be really classy. I'm going to propose to my wife with a photo. But the ring's going to be in the photo and she's not going to be near me. Because I'm dying of dysentery on the battles of get like in the, the fields of Gettysburg. And <laughs> he's like, this is how you propose back in the 1800s if you had money. And we're dying of dysentery on the Battle of Gettysburg. All right. I'm being crazy. Let's uh, get some of this color in. I'm gonna... I'm gonna do the executive decision and make his arm like go like that. Does that look right? No, nope, that's still not right. We gotta just, we gotta figure this out. His arm, how do you work, sir? How do your body do? I do not understand. Oh my Lord. That's right. That's okay. This is the new. Pro I um, we're gonna make this a game. So the reason why I actually am only the only reason why I did live stream is because I can't figure out this guy's arm, and I needed obviously a large group of people to help me out because I can't figure out it clearly. I let me. Well, let's get this right. Okay, there's gonna be some darkness over here because this is the side of his body. So we will uh, do that. There's some dark. Okay. How does it about? I'm just trying to like move my own arm in that position. Like how does my arm? So I think what we're having here is there's some depth here. So that, like his arm is bent and it comes forward here like down so like boom let's put that there so but it curves in such an unnatural looking way that like i'm spaghetti or maybe that's just a giant lobster claw like right here back at the lobster claw thing again i'm doing great goat cheese i'm just trying to uh figure out how this man works it would help to know when the photo was taken. My wife is really knowledgeable. Oh, really? Okay, the photo was taken um, probably in the 1840s, 1850s. It's on a, I believe what's called a dendrotype. Or a, I can't, uh, a dendrit. There was literally no name, no context to this photo at all. It is done. There is nothing. So I've been drawing on this guy. I have no information over who he is or what time frame. All I can guess is by the type of photo, because it was glass. You can like there's like this weird like fabric behind it that's like all painted over with some like rubbery material, and that is what you see. So the white stuff like that's like clouded, the that is like painted on the thing or something, and everything that has like brown or dark is actually see through on this little glass piece, and the brown stuff. Like fabrics that behind it is what gives it color. It's pretty cool. Um, yeah. But beyond that, I don't have much information on him at all. I've tried to look at jackets at the time, but nobody quite had a jacket. His is like tie that looks like you can't either tie a tie. I mean, obviously it's just the fashion. Like they had big tie things right back then, but. It's a little ridiculous looking just from a, a modern perspective, but I think it's pretty cool. I like his outfit. It's pretty nice. I had to get this right. He has a bump right here because his, his coat, his jacket was like, wasn't like held down or when they took the photo or something. So, all right, that's too dark. I think, I think the secret to this is a different type of coloring. So I'm going to do like layers, like. Type of thing. Follow up the line, the arm. There's gotta be some way this works. Otherwise, I'm probably I could I mean I could genuinely just be seeing the arm completely wrong, and it's actually that's that is a possibility. What happened? What would happen if I did this? So for fun fact, this program forces me to just slight oh too far. I gotta like. Otherwise, it's not perfect. I have to just move this dial. Just there we go. Perfect. Okay. Now, if I cover this, oh, that's right. I gotta delete some of this too. Uh, 
Oh, no, I am a goof. Let's try, uh, let's try this again. Okay. There is... I wonder if what I'm seeing here is his arm. Like, this, like, line right here. And this is just background that I just picked up. So I think his arm, net, like, makes more logical sense. Like, let's try this. Okay. I'm gonna paint over this. Let's make this 100%. Okay, we got it. Okay. I think... I think this is his arm. Like, hmm. That looks more human. <laughs> I like, I think this is the right move. I think that was the issue. That weird bump was just throwing me for a loop. Cause now it looks like his arm is here. I, it's still a bit of a weird bend, but it's definitely less dramatic. Hello, on Tapia. I think the tie is a carvat, or is it like French, like carva? Carvat. At least I believe that's how it, you translate it. Hmm. Maybe get a mirror and try to replicate. See, I thought about that, but his arms, like it. it uh, actually, it's not a bad point. It's kind of too late. I don't know. I've already got this arm done. But the, the thing is, is, it's... That would have worked, I feel. But I'm going to make this hard on myself and try to make both sides do. I'm just trying to get the... Uh... Oh, way too bright. That's this stuff. Okay. Well, I'm going to try this out and see where this leads me. I think that makes more sense anatomically. Okay, let's try this out. I'm gonna get this dark again. Fade it to about 30-ish. Okay, shrink it. All right, let's try. Okay. Oh no. All right. I should I should put this layer on top, but I've kind of didn't make this photo as fan. Like I've made some goofs, like layering it, so I can't. I can't. So we're just gonna. Ugh. Uh. All right, there, perfect. Just got a few of these. I could just erase the outside a bit, but. So, it almost looks like it, then it goes like that. How does that work? Ah, uh, it's blurry enough where I think, if I just make this pillow work, his arms are gonna be like, Blurry enough. We'll make it work. Okay, so let's get the uh, some paint going. So let's make this thicker and work. I like this. So there's some like darkness here. So I'm gonna fill that in. Need that dramatic for the coloring later. Okay, it's a bit brighter up here. So I'm gonna... It's a little different right here. Okay, that's not different enough. It's a little darker. Yeah, there we go. All right, and... One more, probably. Let's do this. Okay. So one of the reasons why I want to also do this live stream is I feel like when I do these a little bit, it helps get me in, back into the mode of making another video. And I have been putting it off too long. But I've had, I don't know, I keep like going back and wanting to do a different video and a different video. And then by the time I know it, I realize it. Um, two months have gone by, and I'm like, well. So, I really want to get, like, the video kind of explaining what I did with, like, school out. I think once I get that off my chest, I feel like that will, like, help me feel a bit better. I really kind of want to do that. Uh, so, yeah, this is turning out better. So 
I'm gonna get some of these crevices in. I'm gonna get these colors. Mm, does the inside make sense to be that bright? It doesn't. It's a little too bright. But I gotta get his arm separated. Over here, I didn't really separate his arm too much from the, the jacket itself. I think that might be a bit of the trick here, but I still kind of need some of that, that color. It is darker in here. So I think if I turn that off, I can, yeah, it's actually brighter in here. Oh, so you can see his arm right there. It makes this like this triangle. Like you get this triangle, it's like boom, boom, boom. So I'm going to try to get that brighter to match that a bit. So it's actually too, too dark in here. So let's try using this and try to keep some of these colors in. This is gonna, have, the side is gonna have to be switched out with another color, but I'm gonna have to figure that out. So what are people talking about now? Um, it kind of looks like the hand is also in his pocket while sitting. That is true. I mean, I mean, I used to take pictures of dead kids in their old, old timey photos. So yeah, we were restarting the arm. Yeah. yeah taboos were still being established around photography at the time so let's i even found in my own family one of those like i said if anybody who missed i when i was i've been scanning a lot of old family photos like really old like this type of stuff and um it was with my uh great aunt she has a bunch i was with her today and yeah she and i found one of a a guy with his baby the dead baby, they're going to bury it. And I mean, it was a sentimental photo, and I can understand that. It's just like, obviously, from today's standard, that's like a really, kind of a, I don't know, kind of a weird thing. Um, I mean, I, don't, I mean, people probably take pictures of their children like if it was at a wake. So I don't know. It's just, it took me by a bit of surprise. I was not expecting that. Okay, so this is going to just be darker. So how does this look? It goes over, so it's like, and it goes kind of like, I'm like using my hand on the screen of my desktop computer. And it kind of goes like down like that. Mm, yeah. We'll blend it, see how it looks later. I can kind of draw more like lines, like make it a bit thicker when I get it blended a bit. It'll look more like this when I'm done. So like I said, I'm I can, I'm competent. This isn't as dumb as, I don't know if anybody here has done this stuff. I've done it enough where I sort of feel like I know what I'm doing. Um, it's not as crazy as it may come across. How long do I usually sleep? Uh, when I get tired, I, I go to bed, I wake up. I normally get about eight hours of sleep a day, but my sleep schedule gets all wonky. Um, hopefully if I get a uh, another job, I can, right now I mostly work at home on a computer and doing work for people. But if I get a uh, work for a, a local town company thing, it'll probably be easier to get myself a actual nice sleep schedule. I just kind of float around throughout the day. Not probably the healthiest thing though, I will admit. Okay, so this is gonna be a bit darker too, I think. Oh. Alright, so his arm is gonna come down, let's see. Okay, I'm gonna start blending this and then I can do more edits if I need. So let's do that. So this, the colors will start to blend. So it doesn't look as dramatic once you start doing the blending. And then I gotta do like a layer, like a dark layer on top of it for the jacket. And then that kind of creates that. So let's hope this works out. Let's see how this works. What are people saying? Dale, it's almost one. <laughs> yeah. 
<coughs> that guy is pretty much rich. That is a, uh, a good guess. I feel 1840s. Look at this guy. He's pretty uh, dapper. Quite dapper. Looking pretty dapper. I feel like that's a good word considering that time era, right? Like it's an old timey sounding word. I do say you look quite dapper. Why, thank you, my dashing good-looking man, too. All right. So that's a bit of the arm. This is already mixed a bit up here, but it wasn't really well done. Okay, so it is brighter up there. So I think it might be worth putting another th like a layer of brighter up here. But I'm happy like this doesn't work like paint, like actual like real world paint, because I I couldn't do it. I'd be messing up so much, like it would be horrible. Because I just paint over like the paint and you just can't do that well with real world paint. So this is nice. It doesn't matter how much I uh, paint over it. Yeah, there we go, that's a good color. So let's kind of match the contour. If I remember correctly, it's very bright up in some of these like parts of the jacket. So probably go a little bit brighter up here. I'll put this side up there, because it looked like, yeah, it looked like there was a bit of a thing right here. All right. I think this is gonna be the tradition when I do live streams. I guess I'm gonna be drawing. I don't know if I'll do that always, but I think for now it's been a uh, kind of a, Every time I've done a live stream, it's been me drawing on the channel. So I get all these people. Every time I do a live stream, though, which I guess has only been once, uh, I get like hundreds of people and subscribe. And I'm like, oof. So yeah, that comes with the uh, only posting a video once like a year. But I'm not too worried. I'm, I always enjoy the people that like, like sticking around. And I don't know. I don't. Now, subscriber, the subscriber number, the only thing it's ever made me think of is like, I gotta try harder to like live up to the, the role. That's, that's, awesome. I mean, if people leave, they leave. I don't get upset by that. I was more surprised by like, getting just as many people watching me as I did. It actually made me feel a bit more self-conscious actually. That's a lot brighter. Was it the brightness? The brightness kind of continues. Maybe it might be worth doing a little something down here. Okay, I'll just paint over that, depending on how intense I need to get rid of that. All right, last little bit, and then we'll start covering it up and see how it looks once I start like painting over it again. Gotta stay away from his like jacket flap right here. All right, so let's, uh, I think I'll match this color. It's just about, about that. Over here, I'm gonna start uh, doing something like this. Just over it, try to like match a shoulder. Maybe a little darker. Okay, let's try that. Yeah, that's better. Try to I'd probably go over this once or twice with some different colors to kind of, uh, it doesn't feel dark enough. Um, oh, that's because I'm a dork and I didn't do the right thing. Okay, well, that works. There we go. I don't normally talk when I work. So like this one, I think like the multitasking, like almost narrating what I'm doing, it's kind of throw me for a loop. So let's see. All right, this isn't dark enough for sure. Oh, it's probably because the airbrush is not intense enough. All right. Alright. 
turn it up a bit. Being a dork isn't a bad thing. I appreciate that. I think they did a collab, but I might be thinking of someone else. Um, why aren't you featured in YouTube Rewind? I used to use YouTube Rewind as motivation to like become a YouTuber. Like getting like, should I rephrase that? I used to use it as motivation to like like keep trying and do it. like that would be the coolest thing to do like it was something to look forward to type thing and now it's literally a thing i actively don't want to be a part of anymore because i'm just i literally could not make it through the most recent one i was just like this is cringy like bleh. so i uh they either gotta stop making them unfortunately i think it'd be cool if they had like sub communities make them like they had like a youtube gaming one and like, the educational side of YouTube doesn't get enough appreciation, but then it gets some of the uh, people who are leading it. Like all these top 10 channels that are the richest. Ah, just, those people drive me crazy. They did a whole video where they basically uh, talked about, like, how, like, your long, like, if you have a, lo a certain toe that's a length, like, you're a smarter person. And no citations. And just, I'm just dying. And I'm like, people believe this. Like, people believe this. There's zero accountability. That's like, I'm going to make like a, uh, like a content cop. I'll probably call it like, like public principle or something. And like do a, a content cop equivalent to like calling out the YouTube educational side. That's more like forgiving though. And like tries to set up a path for success rather than simply like try to spook them all to, act a certain way but i don't know um, for me i think like the the youtube educational side is it needs some uh help even vsauce like michael's just like he's just doing his own thing now he's kind of like eh. it's kind of a bummer i wish he just did his old youtube stuff but it is what it is see look guys i can draw it's not horrible like <laughs> not that anybody said it was going to be but I had to establish that fact for myself. So. <laughs> All right. So this is definitely gonna be the dark video here. Look at that. Look at this dapper guy. Now that's gotta be fixed because that looks like someone just took an eraser and just scraped it. But we'll get to that when we get there. So we'll do a little bit more. <laughs> We're gonna sky's jacket. Then I can show all my family on Facebook and then be like, yay. It's pretty much who I make these for. I'll post this one on uh, my Twitter though. I, ha I don't even post on Twitter. Twitter is such a garbage shoot sometimes. I'm just, I, don't, I haven't even been using it mostly because I just don't enjoy it. Like, I, I don't know. I, I don't like the idea. Like, I know people are like, some YouTubers like, I gotta use social media. I gotta post two times a day. Like, it feels so fake. Like, I'm like, talk when you want to talk. Like, don't, like, restrict yourself because you're like, oh. All right. Let's put a little... There's some dark, like, there's a dark, almost, like, fold right here in his clothing. So I'm going to add a little bit more, like, black. Blend that in a bit. How does it look? So it's like... Alright. And he has definitely like some fold right here. And there's a, definitely something brighter up there, so I'll put like a dark fold underneath to contrast it a bit. And there. Let's try this out. Okay. I'll probably. How does his arm look like up here? So, there's a bit of a fold right here too, isn't there? So I'm gonna. Kind of get that in there. All right, let's try. Oh, 
too dramatic. Nope, nope, not what I want to do. What are people talking about now? You should colorize it. I have to have someone else colorize it. Though to be honest, I don't know what more color would be. I think he's genuinely wearing a black and white shirt. I think the only color would be his face. He's got clearly blue eyes because it's like dark eyes are often like really dramatic on um, these old photos. So I know he's got blue eyes, like a like a brightish blue. His hair could be light brown to black. Uh, I have no idea. It's not blonde, that's for sure. But it's a, a bit tricky. Let's uh, like actually do the blur. That, that, that's a pretty nice effect. All right. Do 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 do. I shouldn't have done up there. And undid it all, but no worries. I've got all night, right? Uh, not again, though. I'm not doing a 12 hour one. That was dumb. I was like brain dead by the end of that. I'll probably put like an hour into this, maybe an hour more. If I don't finish it tonight, I don't finish it. I just thought it'd be kind of fun to like go over it with everybody and kind of talk and catch up a little bit. I haven't talked to everybody in such a while. And it's kind of like a fun little side project to show people what I'm doing. Make it a little bigger. I'm gonna have to get his inner arm a little bit. I'll do that next. Just too much interpretation on this side. It's very challenging. Not as much coat ruffle too. I should have thought about that. That kind of like adds a bit more depth to it. The arm's a little smooth. I'll probably do that actually right now. Let's put a little bit of coat ruffle. Let's erase a little bit of right, like, like a little bit of. Elbows probably gonna have a little bit more. Put like a little, like a bend right there. Nope. Make this a bit smaller. The other side, that's like actually coat ruffle. So like the, the sleeves are pushed up around those corners. This side, it's hard to tell what is even going on. Like you can see it's smooth up there, but it's uh. Kinda, kinda roughly down here a little bit. I might keep that not there then, but down here could definitely use a little bit more depth because it's a little flat. Right, let's try that and then switch to here. Get rid of that. Do, 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 do. Okay, let's get some coat ruffle. I think that's a little too much coat ruffle. That's a word I've been making up, by the way. I, I don't know if that's actually a word, but I'm using it. So, <laughs> coat ruffle. All right. So let's uh, get this out here. It's like uh, that's pretty good. Eh, it's a little dramatic, isn't it? Do like. Okay, and then do 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 there. Boom boom there. Okay. Now yeah, it looks a little bit more natural. I'll uh put I'll cover this up. Fill in a bit around it. 
there. Make it smaller. Some nice good old coat ruffle. This point a little nope, okay, well that's not gonna matter. Okay. That's, looks a little bit more natural. A little better. I like that. Ruffles are the best. That is a true fact, and science can prove that. Hey Dale, did you graduate top ten of your class? No, I did not. High school especially not. I Spent more time reading about other things than my own classes. I did poor in high school, actually. Um, probably contrary to public belief. Because I studied more about... I studied what I wanted to. I never really cared much about what they were teaching class. And that backfired on me pretty bad later. Um, but... It was something I should not have... I should have put more attention to what they were teaching in the high school, but I cared more about what I was interested in, and that's what I learned. So I, I know a lot of things, but that's partly because I cared more about what I was immediately interested in. And that's, yeah. Not, oh, what, what is dramatic? Hold up. Yeah, I, that was my problem in high school as I was... I did. I care too much about what I wanted to learn at the moment. Not wise long-term decision. Okay, coat ruffles. Eh, they help. I'm gonna just go with it. I'll make it work. I'll do it live. Kind of add that, we'll kind of fill in the space a bit. Because essentially, like, there's, this is always, like, the when you have a photo this destroyed, it's always going to be a bit of an interpretation, and you're going to have to take some aesthetic or artistic liberties. So that's kind of where I'm at with this. I'm going to try and see if there's any questions going on. So I was expecting you to say something like, not to brag, but I always... I was actually valedictorian. Oh, hello, my bad. <laughs> no. Um, that was actually why I like I didn't want to make that mistake in college, and I felt like more obligated to be like assertive with my own education, like make sure I'm like actually um, studying and doing what I'm giving because I couldn't be someone who's could potentially be influential in the community and not have done that myself while I was like trying to get involved in that community. As I've said, I, I'm, I, one of the reasons why I stepped back away from YouTube back in 2016, I stopped uploading so frequently was literally because there was an, I could not be a YouTube educator and not value my own education. And being you doing YouTube was literally be doing what I was essentially doing in high school. I was just paying more attention to what I was immediately interested in, and I was paying less attention to my schoolwork. And I felt that was a problem. Now I will say I wasn't doing poorly per se in school. I mean I was mostly A's and B's. Um, but the semester before I stepped down, I got a single C plus. I only had one C plus the entire time I was in college, and that was like. It was a 79, but that was like, like, no, I can't. I gotta, I gotta, like, actually, like, assert myself. So, uh. Yeah, that is that. No, oh, that's too bright. Huh. <sighs> But I think at the, at the what well, my story can tell anybody anything is that you don't need to be a genius to like like early on to like be someone who can be influential. You just gotta I like what I what, how I determine how someone is smart is not merely based upon how much they do know, but how much they're able to recognize concerning what they don't. There's a lot of people 
I, and I see this a lot, because I mean, I'm an anthropologist, and I do a lot of people who think they understand anthropology and all that. Um, they, they know a lot about one thing, and they, they almost use that as a way to kind of like, almost suggest that they know a lot about something else. Or they, they just become so confident in what they know, that they don't even recognize that they might not be taking this into consideration. There's a lot of smart people that do that, a lot. And that, that concept has changed my approach and how I deal like, with like, intelligence. And I know a lot of people who know a lot about things that are very uh, lacking in that department, being so aware of their own gaps and their own knowledge. That has what, that's what my whole YouTube channel has literally been about, is recognizing like, gaps in our knowledge and like, trying to post quotes, uh, questions and things in ways that no one really thought about. That is what I've been doing. And that's, like I say, like college and YouTube have conditioned me to like be very adamant about recognizing gaps in my own knowledge. And so I think I've become a smarter person, per se, um, because of that. I, being aware of that has helped me a lot. Um, so I don't know. I feel like great arguments are like when you get like people who are like like you hear like all the arguments in like popular media and stuff right now you can just name it and you guess there's a person who knows a lot about a subject and there's a person who thinks they know a lot about a subject and then you put them up together and then sometimes confidence can overcome um, your actual legitimate lack of understanding of a subject matter. And people will believe you. That's why I am very stressed out by the fact that YouTube, look at this, look at this, they are discontinuing annotation editor. I am furious. But this is a while, like, they, when they did that, um, no, this is an update. We, um, we will stop showing existing annotations to viewers starting January 15th, 2019. All existing annotations will be removed. This enrages me as a YouTube educator because I am human. I make mistakes sometimes in my videos. It happens to the best of us. But now it's becoming even more harder for me to make any sort of notification that corrects my mistakes. That blows my, I am so frustrated by that. That is, ugh. Beyond the fact that they already got rid of it and I've had to just be able to put end cards, my old ones are gonna be gone. I am so upset about that. Come on, YouTube. You're a joke. Can't believe you. Why you do this to me? The educational side of YouTube is getting, it's just, it's, I don't know, it's overtaken by like these top 10 channels, these people don't, they're talking about, got hiccups, sorry, and, um, and it's just, it's, it's obnoxious, but I guess in a way, like, I shouldn't use what I'm irritated as, like, as a means to, like, leave, like, I, if anything, be the change you want to see and try to encourage like the change you want to see. So for me, what I got to start doing is like if I want YouTube to improve, I got to be involved with YouTube. I got to give them incentive to care about my opinions. And that way I can hopefully make like a better platform for the, all like everybody. But my opinion right now is that YouTube is in a huge identity crisis. If anything Will Smith leading YouTube Rewind should be a very clear <laughs> and obvious uh, example. YouTube has no idea <laughs> who the heck its creators are. Uh, I know Will Smith has his own YouTube channel, but it's like, what? Or the year before, that was The Rock. What? The Rock? I like The Rock, don't get me wrong. Dwayne The Rock Johnson, it's cool, but YouTube's got its own, like people like that have contributed to it in like its own uh, it's so weird to have like oh john oliver is really kind of i mean he's he is and isn't he's the weird limbo i think out of them all 
Jimmy Kimmel is obviously not YouTube in my book, but but they're getting in Sesame Street. That's not YouTube in my book. That's not YouTube. These are these are things that became well established outside of YouTube. That's why I think like John Oliver is this weird middle ground. Regardless of your political opinion, I think he's like his show kind of like was really grappled onto YouTube, and he's kind of like like he's the weird limbo. But I. I think for the most part, like, YouTube just doesn't, you know, it's, like, content creators, and it doesn't know how to, like, approach the ones that, like, are, um, like, obviously, PewDiePie and, oh, Jake Paul, or, they have some weird, uh, brand issues that I think that would be, YouTube would just be chewed out alive if they use them, they'd be chewed out alive as they have been, or not, or whatever. I know T-Series, that whole T-Series thing. Um, it's conditioning a lot of people to support PewDie, so that's been interesting, but, uh, you just, nobody can win anymore, it's just a mess, I feel bad for everybody. Everybody who just, like, wants YouTube to work, <laughs> they kind of get, like, screwed over. What are other people talking about right now? A fool thinks of himself to be wise, but a wise man knows himself to be a fool. Yes! That's a very... Good quote. And that was probably a while ago, and I'm just now seeing that, isn't it? Oh, no, that is it. My favorite is, I think it's from The Odyssey? Uh, it's uh, The Oracle of Delphi. This would be like, The Oracle told me that I was a wa the wisest of all the Greeks, for I alone knew that I know nothing, or something along those lines. Um, I learned that in Civilization. I think Civilization Four or something. Ugh. A lot of good quotes in that game. All the Civilization games, but, um... Yeah, that one's always stuck with me. Especially, like, as I became more aware of, like... How nice it is to, like... Have people who are aware of their own gaps and their own knowledge. Okay, I think... I'm just gonna leave the arm where it is at the moment. I think it's not too bad. I'm gonna have to, like, define, like, the arm a bit more later. But I'm gonna do that after I get this pillow mess figured out, so... There's some, like, design work here. So clearly, like, I'm going to have to find a way to keep that. I might actually, like, not color it in and then, like, just kind of, like, patch up, like, the, uh, like, some of these weird holes and stuff. But kind of keep the actual photo there the best I can. Because it is, I just don't know what this is. Like, he's holding something. There's a star here, but that could be a scratch. Ah. I don't know. Looks like it looks like some sort of like weird American flag almost, but it's not. But yeah, Jake is a piece of work. PewDiePie has made some weird. He's made some mistakes, but I don't, I don't watch them all that much, so. I mean, I'm aware of PewDiePie because I I try to I try to stay up to date with like YouTube news and stuff, but I haven't. All I know is like obviously everybody knows is seen only some of his videos, so I I try to take a grain for salt. Like I can't use like single incidences to try to scope out like a person, and that's what's hard. Like I think like what he like those mistakes are like. That's just that's yeah. I I don't know. I don't really, I haven't really thought enough on the whole YouTube or PewDiePie situation to even be able to comment anything I feel worth that is really going to contribute pr like a productive, productively to the conversation. So, yeah, I'd have to think over like all of his stuff. I need to know him more as a person to kind of get a good grasp. I feel it's very easy, like the whole Kevin Hart thingy, like it's very easy to like, take like snapshots of a person and be like that's how I'm going to paint you and I don't know I know some people in my life who've done some really really horrible things and have said some horrible things but I found that isolating them and putting them in an environment where they're only allowed to be around like-minded people only condition them to never like only think that I was part of a, uh, a small community where I was running like a, a makeshift government and it was mostly with, like, teens and some people my age. So it was, like, like young adults. And we were, like, running a mock government. 
And uh, this is, I've been doing this for a while. I, I only recently got out of it, but I was in charge and there was an incident where we had some kids, uh, 16, 15, they were playing, like it was on Discord and they were playing that Alabama song, if you know that, <laughs> that song. And what happened was, is we had an African-American kid who was in the community and I wasn't there when this happened. I told them never to play that and they did it. Well, African-American kid was on and he just popped on the chat when that song was playing and like, like, he's like, can you, can you get rid of that? And they're like, no. And he was like, I, that, you understand, like, this is, this is a really crap song. I don't really want to listen to it. And they're like, you, you, it's not, you should be offended. And they're like making this big deal out of this. And that, like, I got furious over this. And the reason why is because one, it's one thing, like, if you're going to do something like, like that, it's going to be offensive. Okay. I can't control you, but don't like try to argue with people why they shouldn't be offended in some regard, especially something that. But what I end up doing was I talked, like I, I went to the, the African American kid um, and I talked to him. Uh, I'm not going to use real people names because I, I know their actual names, so that's why I'm just going to use them as by these identifiers. And I talked to him and I was basically like, what do you want to do? I know from my personal experience, we could, we could get rid of them. If that's what you want me to do, I will remove them from the community permanently. No questions asked. You don't have to feel bad about that. But just realize that what may happen is they're, they're probably just going to stick around people who don't care. That will like that are also inconsiderate and that type of stuff. I'm going to argue that if you're willing to forgive them and work with them, you're going to give them incentive to want to still be part of this community, be part of a group of people that recognize like some of the awkwardness around like being so adamantly like, I don't know, raises? I don't know, like the, but I was like, but being like, you're going to put them in a, give them incentive to want to continue to be part of a community that will help them maybe like be a bit more empathetic. That, that's maybe it. And he decided to let them stay. That was his decision. I gave that to him. And oh, oh, as time, they actually, things, they, they became semi-friends and the guys like chilled out quite a bit. And what I found was, is that one of the most really nice things about forgiveness is you give people something to lose, All right? Have a nice one. Good night. You give some people something to lose. When they have, when you're willing to forgive someone by being rash and being explosive and being all this, the consequences are often like they, there's nothing that, that is going to be like they, they've done it. They got caught. There's no way to fix it. So you just continue. But if you're willing to forgive people, um, you put them in a situation where they can still be with people that they've had some good times with and they still have the opportunity. Things could go back to semi-relatively how they were before. But you just have to be willing to want to work with those people and be considerate. So, um, yeah, I forget where this whole conversation started. But in my, in my experience... Um, Giving people, like, for, like being able to forgive and work with people. I think that's, yeah, YouTube and PewDie and all that. If, you give, if you're willing to forgive people, you give them incentive to adjust their own behavior, to want to be empathetic and work with people that they might actually find themselves liking. And I think right now there's just not enough people willing to forgive. All we want to do is just, like, call out people and all this. And we never want... It's one thing to call things out, but it's, it's another to not want to, like, work with people to help maybe help them identify things like problems, maybe be a bit more empathetic, yada, yada, yada. I don't know. But I just think that people are so quick nowadays to cut people off and not give them an opportunity to realize that they're, they, they're going to lose something. They have, Like if you forgive, you give people, like I said, incentive. You, re they give, you give them the, an understanding that they got something to lose. And that's, I think that's what's really kind of an interesting social aspect of forgiveness is that so I gave uh, uh, the kid the the power to make a decision I was gonna respect it if he wanted to leave I was gonna respect that but after talking to him a little bit he's the one who decided to let them stay and in the end they end up becoming semi okay one of them did end up leave so there's two guys who caught like the whole incident with the song one of them stayed and he's still around and he became good friends with everybody and the other one kind of left but the one who was stayed was the one who enjoyed the community enough and he realized he had something to lose and it 
had an impact on him. And then he ended up sticking around people who were a bit more, I don't know, I don't, empathetic? I don't know, it's the right innately word for it, but... Yeah, that's that's about that for that whole story. It's a, it's a bit complicated. All right, have a nice one. Take care. Yeah, I think that's a good point from a place. That I just... What were your favorite parts about the Canadian community? Was the only part... Of that, I remember you the time Hoyana. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I enjoy like this is what the it was a mock government for called Canada for anybody who's not aware. I think for me personally, what I enjo enjoyed was just being able to like talk to people from different parts of, like the world. That's like the same reason I love the my the YouTube community. I'm being able to talk to all the people is. You get different perspectives on things, and I found that I really enjoyed being able to actually talk to people, and sometimes you get to see why people think the way they do, and sometimes that's for the better, sometimes you realize that some people are just really cancery, and it's hard to, like, have a genuine conversation, but I don't know. I really enjoy having genuine conversations, being real, and trying to leave a positive impact. I think it's very easy to uh, just want to hang with people. And I'll kind of like treat a, a relationship in a selfish manner. And that's, there's not innately a problem with that, I have to say. But what I like to do is I like to understand like, like what are people's perspectives? Where do they come from? And maybe there's some place where we can all like learn from each other and become better people because of it. I don't know. All I know is that in the case of uh, our, the, the group that we had online, um, I was very thankful that I got to have the opportunity to kind of like learn from them and talk to them about their feelings and why they felt this way. What what made some of these people like do do the Alabama song? Like what what is that? Like where do those feelings come from? Where like what is it? And um and I never came from hate. I I don't really find myself easily hating people. I think one thing is to try to understand and help and prove people's own like situation get them thinking a little bit more critically so i don't know this is all just off the cuff i could probably really like articulate myself at some time that i like, kind of really think i'm like i said i'm one that, that likes to think a lot about what i'm like i say so like these are kind of fun because it's kind of off the cuff but i'm i'm much more of the type of person who likes to really kind of like take some time to think about why i feel the way i do and um yeah I think that's turning out pretty good. I think the blanket, I'm just gonna make the blanket dark. I think that, I, I don't know if there's a design on it, but I think that's probably the best this is gonna be. There's the jacket. I'm gonna do more, a little bit more work in here, but I just wanna kinda get this blanket all kinda worked up. Now, I'm still trying to figure out if that's like an actual design in here. All right, good night, everybody who's been leaving. Diversity is important. I think diversity of thought is important. But. No. I think it's really nice. Like, I love, like, getting in, like, some of the, like, I did a whole thing in my, in college, like, studying 4chan, which was, woo. That was something. But I found it really interesting to try to, like, understand people, try to justify their rationale for things and understand stuff. And even if I, I vehemently disagree with some of the things that they post, like, on boards, like, poll, um, I still think it was interesting to get, like, hear it. And they had a place they could talk about it, even if it, it's not something I'm necessarily agree with in cases, but... Um, I don't know, I just, I think one of the best ways to deal with things that you disagree with is to understand, like, your most fierce opponents. So what often what I enjoy doing is if there, I, if I have a, a belief or a position on a matter, I try to, like, hear the most, like, the opposition. Like, why are they not on my side? Where am I, where do I stand in relation to them and what are their best arguments? 
that is what I really like doing. And I have been doing a lot of that throughout my life. And I feel like it's got me to a situation where I, I try to represent the people I disagree with the best I can and the, like, with respect. Like to have them represented accurately. So, like, I vehemently disagree with flat earthers. But I also try to understand their positions the best I can. Even if I, I think it's sometimes a bit ridiculous. I gotta switch my phone around so I can, like, actually see what people are talking about. The jacket looks good. Thank you. I'm surprised to get 14 people. That's pretty impressive. Especially at like 1.44 a.m. At least in Eastern time. I don't know where everybody else is. I might, do, I might do a little bit on the tile. Do a little bit more work here. I think I'm going to keep this relatively... Like I can only do so much work in some of these places. I'm just going to keep like going over and never being satisfied. So... I have to draw the line at some point, but that's. I know, like his little coat thing here. I'm gonna have to. Uh, work on a bit. Uh, I haven't actually covered a lot of this stuff up yet. Some of the stuff I did up here, I filled in a bit. Some of the stuff down here, I haven't even touched. That's why it's kind of like all still like speckled, and you see like some of these dirt, whatever the heck it is, so. Oh, I think this fabric goes up around here. No, I don't know what that is, but. Oh, I know what that is. That's this. All right. Oh, hold up. So I'm guessing these are some sort of, like, obviously his pants, the lower half of his body. He is definitely holding something. So let me see if I can just fill this in a bit. I imagine his jacket probably covers some of this, so I'm going to assume that's probably how this works. But I'm just going to fill it in a bit. I have no idea what I'm doing down here, so this is just... This is all the artistic interpretation, I guess. I'm gonna have to figure out. Probably would be relatively smooth, I imagine. I don't even know if he's sitting. Might be. I imagine he is, but. I'm gonna assume his jacket's probably still down here. So I'm gonna fill that in. Follow the contours of this pillowy flag thing. I wonder how long it took for this guy specifically to uh, have the photo taken. Wait, what are people talking right now? Well, it's pretty late here, Dale. I don't want to throw off my sleep schedule. Good night. Yep, have a good night. Take care. I think he's standing. Yeah, I, you're probably right, Aaron. 5 p.m. in South Australia. Oof. Wow. You're in the future over there, right? Is that how that works? <laughs> I am. I bet the Australians when they have like an American or like someone over here and like streaming at like midnight and you're like, oh, thank goodness, like a great, this is like perfect time to like watch something. Poor Australians. Such an awkward time zone. Unless you like anime, I guess, because all the anime I imagine would like come out around that time, right? You're almost like if you're in Australia, I imagine you're yeah, you're pretty close to Japan, so you get that. Eastern United States, I think there's like there's a part of South America, I think it's like Venezuela or something, that is the same time as it's in the same time zone as the East Coast, because South America is pushed in a bit. So. Actually, having that a bit darker kind of looks not bad. I'm not going to keep it that sloppy, but huh, it's not that bad, actually. I kind of like that. I just got to figure out what the heck this is. Finish up his jacket a little bit more, and we're done. We're done, everybody. 
See? Now, if I started this from the get-go, that would be another, like, 10-hour <laughs> video. <laughs> Thank goodness. We're not doing that this time. My, uh... I don't think I'd be able to take it. Alright. Drawn on rivers. Okay, this is Bryce. I'm assuming that there is still like, a blanket, but I think I could make whatever the heck he's holding kind of look like stuff over here. So I might just go with that. Hmm. It would be really cool if we could find his name. I think, like I said, I believe, like, according to my grandfather, he believes that this was a guy who was a really old man when he met him, and he believes his last name is Creasy. He called him Old Man Creasy. So, yeah. Old Man Creasy. So that's why I'm going to call him his Old Man Creasy. Despite looking like a 30-year-old in this photo, but hey. Old Man Creasy's, uh, Sneaky man. Okay, I'm gonna just do this, get this done with it that way. It feels it's pretty quick. Alright, nope, it's too dark. Let's make it a little bit brighter. I'm gonna. Interpretation. That's what I call this. this interpretation. This is why, like, when I do photo repair, I, like, when they're this badly damaged, it's obnoxious. It's funny because you think being able to, like, interpret is easy, but actually this is the hardest stuff for me. Like, if this arm is any caveat, this had less interpretation. Looks great. This one looks like he's trying to hide his, mon his monster lobster claw hand. So, let me do... Let's uh, got to turn off my space heater. I don't know, I'm getting a runny nose all of a sudden. I don't know what that's about. Okay. Maybe that's not too bad. I'll do a little bit brighter. Oh, this side right here. That's too bright. I don't even know, like, people, are people just listening to me, or are, are people actually watching me draw? That's the question. That's the million dollar question. Is this so? I am so sorry. I am rambling a lot. Is it just, there's eight people watching. So, I'm still impressed. All right, let's, uh... Uh, where is it? Okay, let's try this out. I feel like one of those YouTubers that are like, let's watch me draw. Like they do that all the time though. I couldn't imagine doing this all the time. That would drive me crazy. Not too noticeable, but it's just enough texture when you see it from a distance. It's just like you know that there's something there. It's a bit darker. Eh, I might make it a little bit brighter on the edge. Feel like it's brighter brown and it's about as bright as it will get, will get it easily. Well, it looks like I just completely undid all the work I just did over there, but that's okay. 
there's a little bit of brightness there, and I think it's just like it's not like you, you feel like there's something there. That's your eyes do the work. All right. I'm watching. Okay, look at these people watching. Look at that. 14 people again? Wow, all these people joined. Like, what is this? What is this guy doing? Who is this dapper man that he is uh, drawing? And that is the million dollar question. <laughs> That'd be funny to make like a challenge if anybody like actually figured out who this guy was. And the odds seem quite astronomical. Um, have like a fun like I don't know, like, a thing, like a gift or something. I don't know how you do it. You'd have to get too many details that, like, like, about him, like, I don't even know, like, if it'd be even, like, able, I'd be able to get, because I, I have, like, some idea where he might be from, but that could be completely wrong, and I almost don't even want to, like, say anything, because then I let people, like, accidentally looking in the wrong place the whole time, and... For all I know, he could be someone from like anywhere in the country. I have family that moved to California. I have family that uh, lived all over, really. A lot of my, f actually I actually have family that got ruined in that earthquake that happened in California, like in what, the teens, the 19 teens, 1900, early, like really early 1900s. I guess they uh, lost their house and like a, a business because nobody had insurance back then. and. Unlike the people who live, like, in hurricane areas, I don't believe a lot of them got, like, any degree of assistance comparable to what we give people today. So, uh, a lot of people got really screwed over by the, uh, earthquakes that happened there, it seems. So, this is something. Oh, jeez. I'm just gonna work on his jacket. I need to do something different than that lower thing. That's driving me crazy. Okay, so, I honestly think he's got like a piece of leather here that he literally has like attached. Like, it's like there's there's buttons. There's one right here. I will like make that brighter so that can be seen though. Well, this clearly some sort of like button he has like. To hold that in. There's another one like right here. I th I'm being cool. Oh, I'm doing it on that dumb layer again. Why do I keep doing that? Ugh. There's that one, and I believe there's that one right there. That one's smaller looking. I don't know if that is a button. It's too small. Oh, it's right here. That's where it was. Found it. I think there's two buttons. All right, let's uh, color this in a bit. We got like this black, smooth that out. Faces are the easiest for me because it's really easy kind of working with the skin tones. Um, just, I mean, like I said, you still have to be like careful, but like there's a, a degree of that that's to kind of work with. I've done, uh, I believe, three big projects. This is the oldest foot I've done. The first one I did was from the 60s. The second one I did was from the 30s. And um, this one is from like 100 years prior to that. So or about 90 or 80 years prior to that. Oh, nope. Okay, we'll just do right here. This is kind of like a weird area. So I got to... Is this jacket kind of bright around here? So I don't know what that's about, but I'll keep some of these dots here for some texture. I don't want like too solid of a color. Anybody saying anything? Looks like he's holding a pillow. Oh yeah, no. pillow like a tray, like maybe a butler. Ooh. John, did someone just say John Willick's booth? I thought he was John Willick's booth at first. <laughs> uh, <laughs> he does kind of have a butlery kind of perspective. Now, granted, uh, I doubt he's a butler, but, you know, 
That is a kind of a good guess. I want to believe that this is like some sort of like like he like this whatever he's holding is like something special to him. Clearly, it's just like what is it? I I don't believe he's a butler. But then again, this is like the 1840s. They're taking photos, but I don't know who takes photos of the butler. Maybe maybe he's a good butler. Maybe he's a cool butler with lobster claws for hands. They hired him. They're like, wow. You're messed up. Okay, that's a bit rough. I'm gonna have to blend that, because that looks... But then again, it's also rough when it's not. <laughs> that, so, uh, you know. Let's do this. These little dots which just kind of suck. Hmm. That's probably as good as it's going to get. So I want to keep some of the shininess. I don't know why that shininess looks like a three, but it does. Okay, I'm going to blend some of this a little bit, but this is going to be gentle because then it looks like he's like, his stomach's out of focus if I make this too blended. I have to like really have to be gentle. Okay, well that's not gentle enough, clearly. Is that even doing anything? Maybe. Eh. Okay, it doesn't even look like it's doing anything. Might be able to get the blur down here. Make that a little more stronger. Alright, let's try this out. Eh. It's not that bad, I guess. This looks really bad down here. So I'm gonna like spray it over with like a dark coat so that way it doesn't look, it pops a little too much. I think it just needs to be darkened just a little. Eh. Oh, that doesn't look right either. It's not as bright as the rest. I think maybe just making them sharper around, like it's just like really thick and doesn't look right. Try some like I feel like that's the major difference here. So a lot of these are kind of straight and sharp. There's fuzziness, but this one's like almost too fuzzy to look right. I think I could put a little bit of like, really like a break. Some of these have like a little bit brighter in that. I think it's kind of missing that. So let's try. And we'll mix that a bit. And It's a bit better, maybe. <sighs> yeah. I 
definitely doesn't look right up here though. Let's try. I'm gonna Derek in the top because it, I think it looks like there, there's like damage, and I think it. Okay, too much. All right, and I think if I get this really fine, I can almost, you'll be able to separate this top part with, you almost recognize that it's, have its own like little line. All right, let's see how this looks. That's better. Hmm. His family or something? Uh, he's not family. I believe. I actually, I have literally no idea. Wait, maybe the photographer didn't even know what he was holding. That's true. There's a potential that, like, some of the. I mean, I have no idea. I mean, they, like I said, they were taking photos of dead kids back then. So, just remember them. I keep making it, like, I mean, it's not that, I mean, it's just, it's weird for me, I guess, it's really, people still to this day, like, I, I mean, eh, I don't know if they take a picture of them once they are dead, but, eh, it's a bit weird. Dark line here is gone, so I need to add that, which is a shadow for the fold here. It's a bit dramatic. It doesn't even look straight. Okay, and I'll blend this over here, and I should do that. All right. I think what I can do is if I make this dark, take this dark stuff, and I make his hand look like it's right here. That can, oh, that's way too small. Hold on. Get to the opacity. I'll probably make it look like his hands like there. And if I can. All right, let's go back to spray. to make this brighter down here. It's just a little, it's just not enough. I can, I can't just. No, that's about right, actually. Yeah. I do need to make it a little bit brighter in here, so I want to take the thick brush and we're going to fill this in to make it a little brighter. If I can spread it out and go over it a bit. Okay. Okay, and then a little bit even brighter in the middle. Okay, let's blur that out and then spray over it. See how that will look. I bet there's like actual artists maybe using like finest one day. He's like, what the heck is this guy doing? He's gonna be like, this is the worst job ever. Okay, let's turn the blur up. All right, there we go. This is just a hobby for me. I don't like. Well, I could do a better job if it's not like literally garbage. Like the photo isn't like destroyed. All right. 
Let me now spray over it. Maybe that will look like add a little bit more depth to this area. Let's make this bigger. Mm. I don't know how much that helped. Probably not enough. You get a little bit of something there, though. Enough where the light contrasts the line here, so it helps make that a bit more visible without being too dramatic. And, yeah. I will uh, probably just focus on like, this little area and fix this up a bit. Hold up. Let's make this work. People saying stuff I don't see it. No. Okay. The big thing is just always like covering up some of the damage that is in some of these parts. Because even if like it's not perfect, if you can get rid of the flakes, it does a lot to help kind of keep the image looking like it's been reworked and is nice and new. Yeah, I think that's really the. I'm trying to get that's the big thing. Oh, hold on. All right. And yeah. I want to thank everybody who has stopped by. Take some time to uh, watch. It's really cool of you. And I can't imagine you could possibly be doing anything more boring than me rambling on. But hey, you know. <laughs> I enjoy these types of conversations because it's more real, I guess. I'm always on a script in my videos, so. Though, I do like scripts. I do like have everything really well thought out. But sometimes these are fun, too. All right. Let's see if I can get this to blur. I don't know if it's going to, but we can get a shot. Oh, yeah. No. No, it's not. Okay, well. I tried. What does this look like up here? Oh, it's this. It's not much better, honestly. It's a little... Hmm. I know what it's missing. It's missing this. These brighter colors in the middle. Alright, let's see. That helps a bit. That actually helps a lot with this tie. Gotta get some of these other colors in here. 
that actually helps quite a bit with like some of these scratches. It's nice. It's cool that the photo is clear enough that I can actually get up this close to like his even chest. I have a nice scanner. These are my brothers. My actually, uh, I have a, a printer that has a scanner on it. And for some reason, Kodak thought it'd be a great idea if you do not have enough ink in your printer, you cannot scan, despite them being completely different functions that do not rely on the <laughs> other's ability to work. Uh, I can't scan, so I have to borrow my brother's scanner. But it is a nice scanner, so it works out. Let's scan this way. This is just going to be permanently blurry is what's going to happen. There's not really much I can do with this tie at the moment, really. Maybe add a bit more definition to some of this, but... Get rid of some of these scratches at the very least. Hello! Hello, new people. Well, thank you very much. I'm happy that you like my scripts, Joe's. Oh, Jose, yes, okay. I... Gotta get my phone closer because I have it on the opposite side of my desk and I can't even see. There we go, perfect. I have moved it. I had to have it charged so I can't even like see what anything looks like. All right, that's much better. Oh, and I can see everyone's comments really well too and when you guys post them, I'll be able to see them immediately. That's much better. Okay, so thank you, Jose. And Soham, am I saying that right? Soham Shah? Saham, maybe. Hello. My English brain likes to pronounce everything anglicized, so yeah. Pretty uh, rough. If anything, I imagine it's great for like when like non-English speakers or at least people who don't have uh, excuse me uh, names that are an English language. Uh, they have some good time messing with English speakers native English speakers because some of us are just really bad at thinking about words anyway but English. Ugh. Luckily I'm around the French enough where sometimes I can kind of make out a French word how it's supposed to be pronounced. My whole mother's family's French. My grandmother's first language was French. Uh, but other than that, I'm like a fish out of water. Some of these. All right. I think that could be made a little sharper. Yeah. Nice and sharp. Every girl is crazy about a sharp dress man. Oh. Okay, nope. Nope, nope. It looks ridiculous. Okay, so this just has to be probably just like very carefully done because it's a little much. Okay. Alright, fair enough. Do, do, do. Oh, no, dude, too big. Ugh, doesn't look right, does it? Uh, it was less bad when it was just really sharp looking, yeah. It's really dramatic. That's what it looks like. It's that high. But it isn't as bright. Maybe I can fade it. Let's erase it slightly. This looks dirty. Well, I don't think there's any way to win with this little bit right here. It's just... All right. Eh. Not horrible, it's just not great. Like I said, this photo is just so old, it's just hard to figure out what's even happening. Nope. Well, I know that ain't happening. 
right. Let's get rid of this little speck of dirt thing. Nice. And get some rid of some of this. Nice. This scratch can go. It's a little too dramatic. All right, well, can't win with this thing. What do I gotta do differently? That works. So these are just fun to do. Like these little scratches to get out because they're really easy to do. out of things to talk about. Probably get some of these out here. These scratches really could probably be, I don't know. It's hard to tell some of this stuff too, these lines, if they're actually part of his costume or not, or his outfit. Probably call it a costume. Though I imagine it's his best clothing among it. I mean, back then you only got like photos like you know, like once a every few years if. degree. Probably as good as it's going to get. Okay, I'm probably just going to finish this last area down here. I think, uh, oh, wait, no, this is going to go. Okay, let me get this area. Okay, and then get in this jacket. So it's a little stronger, a little bigger. And then this last little bit up here in this corner of his jacket. That should be enough. Should probably like come to like a pinch, like a very like it should be as big. Something like that. That looks nice. You can see that it bends a bit here, so I imagine that means there's be just an ever so little bit of a light to kind of like show that it's doing that. So let's then put that there, and then like that. See, there you go. A little bit, maybe a little less. It's just un, just barely enough to kind of, from a distance, you get to see a bit of that bend, like right there. Get the same thing with like that. That's like a bend right there too. That's, you need a little bit of light for that. Oh, oh. Alright. Oh, what's going on? I click that. Alright. Alright. Yep, this is turning out not too bad. Anybody still got questions? Thoughts on mashed potatoes? Mashed potatoes are great. I love mashed potatoes. I like taking mashed potatoes and um, putting corn in or peas and then um, eating it with that. Sometimes like a little bit of sriracha salt because I love spicy food and I like giving it a little kick. And then yeah, it's pretty nice. I am a, mashed potatoes are 10 out of 10. Especially if they're like, you can get like a vinegar or even like a, uh, 
Oh. Not vinegar. Did I say vinegar? Uh, garlic? <laughs> vinegar mashed potatoes. Oof. That sounds a bit, uh, a bit rough. Can't say. What's your favorite video you have made? The one that has Michael Stevens in it. The one, um, there's a video that I made that, um, is about, uh, words. That's probably my favorite I've made, because not only did I get Michael Stevens in it, which really meant a lot to me, but also, I really wanted to do that topic. Um, other than that, I had to say my second favorite video would be the, are you going to be remembered, or no, will your existence be forgotten? That's probably a close second. Um, I do like that one a lot. But both of them are really awesome. And I think, I don't know, there's a few videos I would still love to make, and if they get done right, maybe I could even top the ones I've already made. Hard to tell. Okay, so let's figure this fabric thing out. Because there is uh, so much is so little to see. I can see that there's a line here, so whatever this is, I'm just going to fill it in. Do, do, do. That would probably go there. And there's a definitely brightness, but it's hard to tell like what is actually bright from like damage and then what is uh bright because it's actually it's bright. <laughs> Maybe he's holding a sack and that's the end of it that could be true too it's i really can't i can't make it out i know there's that there so he's definitely holding something want to believe it's like embroidered <laughs> maybe it's embroidered maybe he did some really nice embroideries and they're forever lost because no one can see them maybe he's like like hey i need a photo done it's some really nice embroideries and now they're they're in this can't see them. They are invisible, essentially. Visible embroideries. Poor guy lost them. He's probably, probably would be really upset to know that his embroideries are gone forever. I would be. That would be really funny if he got a photo done just for like, he's like, I made this. And of all the things that didn't survive in the photo, it was a thing we made. Oh, that's rough. That's some rough luck or lack thereof. Now here's a question I want to ask everybody. This is like important. Does this look like a star? Or do you think that's damaged? Because there's this line that kind of goes through here. Because if that was a star, then it's... But I was looking at if this was another one right beside it. Like a star and a star. Or does it just look like damage? Like, if you get back a little bit, you can see it. But I would assume, like, it would, there would be more than them. And I can't tell, like, if there are from that angle. But it looks like it could be a star. Like, if you get from a distance, but it's just hard to tell. I think it's probably a cut, like, damage. And it's just managed to look like something in the fabric. It's hard to tell. Uh, I can't. I, I believe it's probably... Uh, I want to guess it's not a star. Because everything down here is so dark, you can't see anything. And of all the things that stay illuminate, it's the star, really? So, I'm going to say it's probably not really there. but eh, I'm going to... Probably put a little bit of lightness there just to kind of indicate that something was there. But other than that, like, that's just that little thing. But other than that, I'm not going to get too into it. Trying to define its shape. Yeah, this is, this is a sucky job. I was thinking about doing, like, photo repairs for, like, uh, like a part-time job. But I ain't never going to do something probably this hard because... There's too much interpretation, and I feel like you'd always get someone be like, that's not what I think it looks like. You did your own little thing. 
I have to like set that aside. And then like how much would you even charge for this kind of work? Like, I mean, this is my own photo, so I'm not really doing this for anybody else, but. Ugh. I'd have to do like simple repairs, like a photo folded or like there's a few. The folds are easy to get out. I love doing the folds. I just. I'd have to, maybe when I post this, I'll post, or maybe I'll make a video over, like, photos. That might be a good one, because I, like, I found, for anybody who wasn't there earlier, if any of you have seen my video, any of you old guys have seen my video over, uh, uh, Will Your Existence Be Forgotten? There's a guy, this is one of my old videos, but there's a guy in that video who I showed, who I had no name for. I was talking about how his existence was forgotten. I recently found out who he was, like, today, like, of all days. I was up at my um, great aunt's, and we were doing a lot of um, scanning photos. She's got all these old, old photos, because uh, my great, like, a few great-grandmothers, she moved really far away from her family, so they sent her photos. Because of that, we got a lot of photos, and she kept them in amazing condition, considering some of them are close to... 100 and a half years old, 150 or so. Some of them. Some of them are like 100 years. No, I don't think there's a single one from her specifically that isn't at least 80 years old. It's pretty cool. Um, anyway, so I've been basically scanning as many of them as I can because they, they break down. And they're, they're old, but they're in great condition, but it's just, if there was ever a fire, anything like that, like, you could lose some of these really old special photos. So I've been scanning them, just having a field day, like a family project. I'm also working on a massive family tree. I have a family tree, which would be fun to do a video over. I have to be careful though, I don't wanna like, expose like living people who might not want their identities like, posted in their like birth year and whatever. But um, I have a family tree with over 600 people on it. That's like a good portion of people alive today and then descendants. I have the oldest family member I can find of mine, direct ancestor, was born in around the th early three, um, uh, 300, or 1300s. So uh, that is the oldest I can find. That, that's like unbelievable to me. Like I know people who are like upset, like this is four bugs ago. I'm just sitting there, I'm like, that is amazing. I can find a relative that far back. Not everybody can do that, I'm very thankful. Um, Probably because the English love records, and uh, I got some of that in me. So that's the oldest branch I can find. I'm Swedish, I have Native American, French, all that. But the oldest line of mine I've been able to find is uh, Anglo-Saxon group post-Norman invasion, 1300s. So that's cool. I got that going. Got that going for me. Got to be optimistic, you know? Not everybody even goes that far. What are your guys' oldest relatives? So if you were to think back to how many generations behind you, the oldest relative you know is, or even just the year, roughly, what would you say that is? Because that's an interesting subject. Because not a lot of people do a lot of work in genealogy, but I love genealogy. And I'd be interested to hear what some of you guys know about your oldest ancestors. Some people don't have a lot. It's unfortunate. If you can ever, I'd recommend if any of you want to look up your genealogy, if you can get back about three generations, you can often get like a good read, of, like your great grandparents or even your great great grandparents, especially. Because by then they've had so many descendants that somebody's most likely done the work, especially if they had big families. Um, and I imagine with a lot of countries around the world that are getting introduced to the internet more and they have, they might have some paper trail like that. Like a lot of um, developing countries and recently developed countries might have more to add to. China might be a really great place to get a, a massive family trees um, down the road that I don't know how much they've contributed to it, but that, that'd be pretty awesome. Okay, so the oldest ancestor I know of died in the Civil War after getting run over by a wagon. Ooh, it's quite the way to go. Reminds me of your video on how many people it takes for you to exist. That was a lot of fun. I like that one. I, uh, that's, it's kind of cool because, like, you think you have that phenomenon known as pedigree collapse. There's really, there's nothing really, like, there's no way you could 
survive that long without like a uh, or with some crossover but it's really fascinating to think about like how many ancestors you have and even beyond that like the fact that every single one of them had to be making the right decisions at the right time for you to even exist you are the right you're the right sperm and the right egg at the, of the month. Like, that's unbelievable to think about. Like, probably even if your parents, like, did the uh, sideways tango a little later in the day, you might even not have been you. It's just, I don't know. Like, the odds just seem so astronomical to me. And I don't, I don't even, like, know how you could even, like, calculate anything. Even if, like, it's even worth trying to calculate. It just seems so just massive. The fact that any of us are here is just unbelievable. But always th I always think about, like, we're here. All of us humans are the ones that just somehow beat the odds. Like, that's a weird thought. Every single human alive today just so happens to be one of the people that beat the odds. There could have been... There's trillions of quadrillions of potential people that never had the chance to even exist. And yet here we are. Pretty crazy. If you ask me. So, I don't even know what the heck this is. I think I'm getting close to being done though. I'm gonna probably clean this up a bit and then kind of like fade these out and call that good. I'm gonna. There's not much more I really can do because I don't know what is even on this. It'd be funny to put like a funny photo on this, like. <laughs> If you zoom really close, you get, like, dick butt. <laughs> but my family would be like, what's that on the pillow? <laughs> like, uh, <laughs> uh, I've got the sense of humor of a child sometimes. Uh, that'd be a good one. <laughs> now, I think for the most part, that I'm, uh, this is not much more I can do for this. Kinda. Oh. Do do do. Spray over this. And do 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 do. So you get a little bit of depth with some of that. Cause I don't want just to be solid. It looks weird. But if you have like some kind of like, like noise, almost, I don't know, for lack of a better word, that kind of really helps. Kind of like, you look at it from back here, you're like, there's, that's something. What it is, I have no idea. <laughs> but uh, at least I don't have to draw his hands, I guess. I mean, not really that hard, but they can be a bit of a nuisance. Maybe this is his childhood blanket. He's just like, this is my blanket. And I wanted to show it to you. All right, what are people saying now? That's a or, ornate. Oh, let me look at. Okay, that's an ornate pillow. I think it is a pillow. Hello, little Lizzie. It's got to be some sort of pillow. Yeah. I, think I might make his hair a little bit darker, but I think that's about it. Like I think it's just like I was drawing to draw at some point. I'm gonna maybe make a little like pinch here, so I can. This, do oh no, too far. Okay, and like pinch. And like adds like a little bit of like, like they don't feel like they're just one kind of like connected thing. I'll even just do this. All right, let's 
delete this a little bit because this goes over. I can show you what this looks like without like him underneath it. It's kind of Orwellian. No, it wouldn't be Orwellian, but it's just goofy. Here, this is what this looks like without the guy behind it. So it's just like, there you go. How's that for nightmares? Like, it's just, you can just see where like I have like cover him up. You get the eyes, like I, I got those pretty well. Like I had to re kind of create them, but that's all where I've drawn everywhere. His face kind of does look like he's in the picture. It's weird, like, when you see it like this, it's really, like, loud, and then it's just, like, boom, all fits together. I think right here could be a little bit darker, but I, I tried putting, making it darker last time, and it just looked dumb. So, I think this is where I'm going to leave it, guys. I think there's really just not much more I can, oh, oh, goodness, not much more I can really do. Let me make this a bit smaller, and I'm going to get rid of this little black thing. I'm just gonna look over a little bit and try to get any like these kind of like, oh, it's kind of messy corners, kind of sharpen it up just a little bit. And probably get that, and that's probably really it. I got the pillow thing done. So I'll put this on Twitter tomorrow. And we'll see how that goes. There's a dot there, let's get rid of that. Yeah, but yeah I think I'd love to do a, a video just like on old photos and kind of like discuss like, like kind of like the importance of them. Kind of like, or like in, the, in terms of like proper taking care of them and like what this is. Like I would, we actually had a very interesting situation recently in my family. So we have this old uh, photo that has all these people who wrote birthdays on it. And it goes all the way back to like the 18, like 20s, 18, like this is like an old, old, old thing. Well, the, the names have been fading on it and they almost took it out and they were going to write over it like in the 80s, but they decided not to because they couldn't really figure out what was underneath it. But because of that, they didn't destroy it and they would have potentially had a write. If you write over something, you don't necessarily like keep it in a good condition. So um, because they didn't do that, they have the original and then I got a scan of it like about would be 40 years later now when they decide not to do it and what that allows me to do is I can I did a scan I got a really high quality version of it and I can see it a bit better than you could with the naked eye and then I can just diddle like around with that's a weird word to use I just mess around with that and um uh I can keep doing it until I get it right so yep <laughs> I found out the reason why a lot of people didn't smile in these old, old photos is because they had really bad teeth. A lot of people don't really think of it. Like, the reason why there's not a lot of smiling because their teeth were horrible. Especially rich people who are often the people getting these photos done. They were the ones who were able to eat sweets and all that. Not everybody could eat sweets. You rich bum. Look at you. Okay, that's about it. I think that's about it, everyone. I can't. Maybe I'm missing something. Maybe not. I don't. I'm gonna make that a little tighter. Oh, whoop. his arm a little darker in this like, corner. I just can't win with this arm. <laughs> I'm gonna leave it at that. And this one was like like this and it's like, it's like I think that's about probably as good as that's gonna get. Yeah, so I think I'm gonna call that good. Oh, no, ooh. Oh, there's a shading right here, that's horrible. How did I miss that? Okay, so let's just let that shadow just like kind of add in there, yeah. All right.
And what's cool, guys, is this might be the only photo in existence of this person. Like, that's a weird thought. Like, this the only thing that's keeping this guy's objective, objective, reality, like, uh, like in check is the fact that this photo exists. Like, outside this, like, this guy could be just completely lost to history. Nobody thinks about him at all. Like, this is it. Like, this could be it. I doubt he's a famous person. He just was well enough to do to get a photo made. So, kind of neat. That's a weird thought. This could be it. Alright. Still a bit dramatic, isn't it? Yeah. That's better. Alrighty. I think that's about where I'm going to leave it. I don't think there's much more I can do that's just not complete and total interpretation. And it's just kind of, you know, keep touching it and touching it up. And you keep changing it. And then eventually you just mess it up. So I'm going to just call it good. I'm going to put a little... I can't stop. See? Like, this is like where you can't stop. You just gotta keep adding stuff to it. Mess it up. I don't even know what the heck this is supposed to be. But it's something. Alright, let me, uh... It's really sharp too. Keep noticing things. That's gonna get me, isn't it? Okay, so that is part of this thing. So I'll just kind of kind of have it go behind here. Alright. Oh, whoops! Not that bad. All right. Have that fade, and I'll do one last peek. I think that'll do it. Yeah, I think that's about it, everyone. Can't see, oh, no, there's that. See, I'll tell you what, I'm just gonna keep finding things. It's never gonna end. That. Right. Blend that in. Yeah. We could be the only people in the world right now, all of us, like, that have any, like, like, that are even aware of this, like, thinking about this guy actively. Like, it's kind of neat. I bet you nobody has thought about this person's existence or even like come across it in probably decades. Like they see a photo, they don't think anything more of it. But like this is probably the first time in a long time anybody's had actually put any sort of focus on this person in such a long time. That's a weird thought too. This photo just would have been lost and damaged forever, probably deteriorating more and more into a point where it's the last little traces of Okay, this is getting depressing. <laughs> the last little traces of him would just be gone. Uh, yeah, I think that's about it. No idea what he's holding. I could probably be interpreting some of this stuff completely wrong. Like some weird, like... I don't know. Uh, could be... I don't know. 1840s-ish. That's definitely where it is. Any idea where the picture was taken? No. <laughs> Literally, no. Uh, Maine, probably the U.S. state of Maine. So there's that. My guess is that's the closest you're probably going to get. If it's the 1840s, there's a city of Portland, which probably would have been the only place with a, a big enough population to actually do photography, nice photography. 
Um, a lot of old photos around this time were taken in Portland, um, but the company, I do not know, but they had this crazy logo. This is, so if I show you the tin type that I had, so this is another photo for every, oh, here's this fun photo for everybody who hasn't been here. It's a guy that I got. Um, there's this really old tin type, this. This is the oldest photo I am aware of in my entire family. This is a tin type. It's painted over, so what they did, and this is what's funny, is the background of this is, uh, I better save this, hold on, that's gonna stress me out. It's a TIFF file, so I'll take a bit, but we'll go back to uh, this, okay. So this is a tin type, and how this photo works is they would take like a, obviously a thing and they put it on this metal. So they, they obviously have it opened up, it takes you in and they close it and then they, they put it on the metal and they paint around it. And the earliest photos, or at least some of the really nice ones, are painted over. You can see that her necklace is like painted on, her hat is painted on, but they had like they, this is their, she actually had these clothing on, um, but they just, they painted over it to give it a bit more oomph. Um, this photo, is actually taken like not it's not level like if I were to flip this around it's very irritating to look at because it's uh, can I draw on this no I can't okay it's basically like like diagonal like the the, the the bottom of this like goes up like this it's like if you see my mouse it's like diagonal it's not even perfectly level and then it like goes up in a sharp angle and then it goes back down again and then it goes straight. So it's like in a, the whole rectangle that this is on is like up in a like roughly like a, maybe like a 20 degree angle. So it's like, it's like tilted, it's weird. Um, and yeah, they painted over this and this is a really high quality uh, one. I can even like, let me see if I can open up and preview. like see some of my family. My last name isn't really all that secret. Oh, okay, here, is this that? Oh, preview. Okay, here, look, here we go. So I can like zoom in on this like really closely. We have no idea who these are. So we, this, like these people are so far removed from even like my great, great grandparents that we, they didn't even know who they were. So we're just, these are people just lost the time as well. But the photo is immaculate. Like this is such a, a beautiful quality. Look how close I can get zoom in this because the scan's high. This woman has, she probably is in her 60s, 50s. She's got white hair here, but it's darker on the side, but it's hard to tell what's shade or not. But this is like a relative of mine, I believe. I think both of them are, dis no, I don't know if they're direct descendants. They might just be like, family but you can see how much these people are in the sun like how much they've aged like there's a lot of sun damage to their skin because these people are only 60 and i mean today you can see for 60 and they're, they're pretty well kept but it's just the amount of like like sun damage and they're, they have like their the size of their faces are really rough it might have been like even like a i don't know it's hard like a sickness of some sort that might have got them and they just have been scarred but they are definitely uh older they probably were born in the 1700s like these people are like, just like old in these 19 1840s photos so we don't actually have a date of this photo we have a number that it was made on this is probably more interesting to me than the other one but it, i don't need to do any work to it like it's it's held up this is almost a 200 year old photo it's a hundred and it's about 180 years old and this is how good of condition it is like my family's done a really good job keeping it it's very special. Like, there's only that little bend right there, and that's it. Like, that is that is unbelievable to me. Like, this is we. I actually have this in my family. A hundred, almost a hundred eighty year old photo, maybe a hundred seventy around there. But this is an eighteen forties, eighteen fifties photo. So that's crazy. Um, but yeah, we have no idea who they are. They didn't have. There's no name on it. There's nothing. So very pretty little frame. But. Is that a name? What is that? Is that a name? No, it just looks like damage. I was gonna say, if that was the name, it was just like this super tiny name this whole time, I would have flipped. Yeah, that's probably my favorite photo in our entire family, just because it's so pretty. They look like my great great grandparents. <laughs> they look old enough to be great great grandparents. <laughs> Ugh. It's neat too because like this is a time before like even makeup was like really used. So like this is just it. 
natural, kind of like all natural, natural. So I wonder what their eye, I think she probably would have had a, a green or a, a darkish eye color. He probably would have had like a, maybe a, I don't know. It's hard to tell because it could even be brown. It's just, you never, you can't even tell. Yeah, these are really old family members, maybe aunts or uncles. We wouldn't have the photo if they weren't family, I don't believe. So that's why I'm like, assume we just, no idea. I have a really old ancestor um, and we, tr we had photos of him, but they've all been since lost. Like he was born like, oh, 1800 or late 1700s. But I think these people are too old even for him because he would have been 40 or 50 by the time some of these early photos were being made. And these people look like they're at least in their 60s. So too old to be him. But the fact that we have is really cool. I, it would be really neat if these are potentially among the oldest people, like the earliest people to ever be photographed in terms of when they were born. So what that means is like, it would be cool if like, say they're born like in a, like 17, like 60 or something. If they are the oldest people alive to have ever been photographed, that would be really interesting. We don't have any way of verifying it, but let's say this is done in 1840 and these people were born and uh, they were like, if they were, oh, they could have been 80. I don't know if they're 80. So they probably would have been 60, 70. I'd say, I'm just going to say 60 lowball it. If this photo was taken in uh, that around then, then they would have... Like, they could be among the oldest people alive to have ever been photographed. Like, the earliest born people. So, I think some Civil War, like, Americans, like, there was three Americans that fought in the Civil War that lived long enough to be photographed. They'd probably be among the oldest, too. I'd imagine it's probably someone who's French. There was a lot of French people that took some really old photos. But, this is just, I don't know, this is just an immaculate photo. It's so pretty. The fact that it's in such good condition, it's probably would be worth something, but never would sell it. It's too special. But that is a family mystery. If any, it would be cool if they get technology at some point, but I don't know how, but if we, you get like enough photo of people's faces in a database, you could actually maybe use like a, some sort of software that could like try to match descendants, but that's really tough because phenotypical expression is kind of complicated. So, but yeah, that's that. They were painted around, so that's what's kind of neat. Like I said, like, like the behind them would have been black or some sort of like dark material. So this is literally like they're painted, and these are like a lot of work went into making this. It's really cool. The fact that we have one, I, like, they must have been family. Because you don't give, like, something like this away to a family friend. I'm sorry. I don't, I don't know. But um, maybe. Maybe we're just really good friends. Like, the best friend type. But her necklace is kind of fun. Like, you get little gold dots. Yeah. Ugh, the world that that woman lived. She would never live, probably, to see even electricity or plumbing. Like... Like, what was her life like? And even him. Like, it's crazy. I don't know, it's just fun to think about. So, that is them. Old Winslow family tintype. About all we got. And then, like I said, there's this guy. For anybody who didn't catch him before, he's a family member. Whoops. Woo, look at this guy. Isn't he fancy as they come? He's got a little scar. <laughs> Um, he's got a nice mustache. I feel like he's like a, uh, a human Pringles. Like if Pringles, the Pringles can became like a human, like their mascot would be this guy. I like how he's got like a cowboy hat, but it's, it's like a, a really fancy cowboy hat. Like this is like, everything about his attire kind of throws me off. Because I feel like he's like a whole bunch of different eras mixed into one. And he's standing on a dead animal, which is, you know, those nice carpets. I wonder what it is. But anyway, history's fun. Family history, too. Okay. Well, I think that's about it, guys. Uh, don't know if there's much more to do. I'm probably going to just, like, touch up. So, done that. Hello, everybody who's been, pop like, managed to pop in and wonder what the heck this is all about. 
I'm basically been repairing a really old photo. I kind of started a little bit later. Like I, I got a bit done before I jumped in this, but I feel, or I felt like um, I could have just, while I was working, might as well just put it on YouTube, talk to people a bit. I haven't been doing a lot. I've been kind of really busy and trying to get other things done. So I felt like since I really wanted to get this photo made, it would be a great opportunity to talk to some of you guys and anybody who had questions and anything. Yeah, about that. So, I think that's it. I don't know if there's any more. Just gonna take a quick look. Nothing I really wanna do. Oh. All right, everyone. I'm gonna probably call that good. Oh, so could he be holding some kind of overcoat with a star? Maybe. The overcoat. I almost wanna put the star on here just to have it. I think that might be like a cool like a little detail. So let me figure out how, where this is. I'm gonna like zoom in on it and get the right size. And I'm just gonna make it. I'm just gonna put it on because I'm just at this point it's all. I'm see, I'm doing it. I'm gonna I'm gonna keep adding stuff. It's all. In, it's so much of this is interpretation at this point because it's so fuzzy at the bottom that it really is just like anything goes. Oh, I should probably make this really bright, like a like a nice white star. That's not too bad. All right, let's figure where this is. So, it's, actually, I could probably draw it on a different layer, and then it's just there. That would actually work really well. Yeah, I'm going to do it really tiny because I got to get the 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 kind of the curve to it. It's got this almost curve. This is obviously really bright in relationship to it, so I'm not gonna keep it this bright, but I'm just gonna, it makes it easy for me to see what I'm doing. Okay, so there's this little leg, and there's this one. It's just that they don't look Similar enough, like some of them are kind of. I don't know. The, the, each of these little legs of the star are kind of wonky, but they're kind of at an angle too. So, but the more I like now that I'm drawing this out, it really doesn't feel like it's actually like there. And it's like it's like really see it, but you know what? Why not? The star edges don't even make sense. I'm probably just gonna make my own star. This is it doesn't even look like it fits right. It doesn't. It, I I'm not I don't think this is a star now. I I think this is like a smudge of some sort. But I'll just make like a nice point and then I'll copy and paste it into each like little corner. Let's get this right, okay. Alright, come on. That's pretty nice. I like that one. Okay, let's fill this in. Hmm. Actually, what if it was like not completely filled in, like like a little bit of like this kind of opening there? Eh, maybe a little thinner. All right. I like that. Okay. Let's copy and paste this bad Jackson a few times. Bada bing. Oh, whoops. Oh, 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 what the heck? Okay, well, you don't look so good. I like that. That's nice. 
It would make sense if he's holding a coat of some sort. I mean, and he might actually be holding a coat. Like, that is a possibility, because, I mean, it's just... There's no way of knowing. Really no way of knowing. Alright, that's what it's going to look like. I'm going to make it dark, of course, but... Stop it. It's going to be like that. Does that look too weird? It's gonna be not as loud, but. I feel like that does have the star. Okay, let's make this a bit less intense. I'll do it on a layer above. Oh, that's the opposite of intense. Or what I was looking for. Edges are just a bit too sharp. I wonder if I can uh, blur it just a bit. Let's make this just big and I'll make it mild. I have a feeling this isn't going to work, but we'll try it. Oh, that's right, it's a different layer. Eh. Uh, too intense. <laughs> it's funny you say that because uh, I do have a blanket literally covering my hands right now. If, uh, I don't know if you're spying on me right now, but I'm spooked. I've been rattled. Okay, well. I think that's blurry enough where it kind of, it's, that's probably, it looks nice and make it a bit darker on top. And I think that's it. I think that's how that's going to go at least. So I find something new to add. So there, it's not loud, it's it's there though. <laughs> Ugh. Yeah, I think that's it. I think we got it. I'm calling it good. I like having some of the realists. I know it's kind of messy down there with that, but it's kinda has that that depth that I feel like gives kind of legitimacy to this feeling like a bit of a pillow. So Let's see what it looked like before and after. So I'll uh, exit out of that. So this is before. This is what it looked like before. And this is the after. I feel like that's a pretty good job. As, at least as good as I can get it. And this is what it looks like without him underneath it. <laughs> Horrifying. So yeah. Let me take a good screenshot. That I did this. Did that work? Nope. There we go. That's how you know. I got this little thing right down in the corner. If you can see that. I don't know. Does it, it doesn't cut off the whole screen. Does it actually cut off some of the screen? Oh, it does. Or at least I think it does. That's not good. Weird. All right. Thank you very much, everyone. Pretty spicy, that's for sure. It's been kind of fun to do. Not perfect. I mean, obviously, you can tell it's a bit drawn on, but it's it's that or that. So, of course, it's going to be drawn on. This is just for fun. All right, I'm going to save this bad Jackson. We'll call that a night. So, thank you, everyone, for watching. It has been a blast. It has been, what, how long have I been hosting this? It's been like an hour, a little over an hour, maybe more than that. Um, thanks for everybody popping by. I hope to get a video actually out sometime soon. And yeah, you all take care. So thank you very much for watching. 
and I will catch you next time. And keep an eye out on Twitter, and I will post this tomorrow, or today, because it's tomorrow for me now. So, okay. <laughs> Bye, everyone.